What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Uh, let's get a quick mic check from you boys. Check, check, check. Testing, testing, testing. Michael Keaton. Finally, it's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> what up, gentlemen? That's true. We're recording. We're live. We're doing this We're casual back. from now on. Okay. We're <laughs> back. Uh, hello. What's going on? A oh. lot going on. No, I'm just kidding. Boom. What? I had to change my lights. Oh, nice. Uh, what's going on? You guys have a good Not, week. Yeah, had a long weekend. Yeah, Memorial long Day week. is today. Yeah, did you celebrate the, the day of which we are recording? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't celebrate. It's I wanted some ribs, day of but reflection and day of celebration. Hmm. Mm. Your Golden Knights won tonight, Marvin. How's that feel? Let's go. Being a new hockey fan, having two teams technically. Two teams, three teams. I got three teams, really. Yeah. You're not a real Ranger fan, though, because <laughs> you weren't there. Yeah, I weren't there for the big L. You weren't there for the big, <laughs> for the big L. Nope. <laughs> nope, you weren't. Yep. I got to say, I'm rooting for Florida. Sorry, Marvin. Nah, they're going to lose. I think I told Owen, I even bet him $20. I think it's going to be Florida and seven. Ooh. He said six, but I think Vegas is too good to go out in six. I th I could easily see Vegas winning it too, but I just think Florida's. I think Florida's got the goalie diff. Mm. That's going to be the difference maker, I think. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, we will. How about your week, Dusty? How about you? What'd you do? Anything? Uh, not a whole lot. No, my uh, my roommate's off for the summer, so we've been uh, playing console games, catching up on the nice playlist. Yeah, nice. What are you playing? Uh, we played the first Jedi game, and instead of moving on to the second, we decided to play the first God of War game. So we nice. Now that the two newest ones have just come out. We've got two more games in the nice list to play as well. So yeah, I didn't play the new God of War. I'm not buying a PS5. I had a, like a crisis yeah. this week because of the uh, PlayStation conference or whatever. And uh, obviously, the big the big announcement was that they're doing a Metal Gear Solid Three remaster. Mm, yep. And as you guys know, yep. Metal Gear is my favorite game series of all time. Yep. It's a great one. Uh, and that be like you minus the nostalgia factor for Metal Gear Solid, like the first one. It or like inarguably, Metal Gear Solid Three is like far and away everybody's favorite Metal Gear game, and it's so <laughs> fucking good. So I'm obviously hyped for that, and I was like, I messaged you because Dusty sent us the trailer in the group chat. I was like, fuck, guess I gotta buy a PS5 now. And mm -hmm. it's funny because every PS console that I've gotten has been because of a Metal Gear game, pretty much. Damn. Yeah. So, so when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, I like, the day it came out, I went to GameStop and bought like a package deal with like the game and the console. And that was my PS3. And literally the only game I think I ever played other than that on the PS3 was Last of Us when it first came out. Mm, yeah. Oh, and I played um, Heavy Rain on the ps3 so oh yeah i never played that i remember that game though i had a paperweight for three games <laughs> heavenly yeah. sword wasn't that ps3 one? i don't know i didn't play any other games those are the only ones i, I played and then PS i haven't uh go ahead sorry no, no you go ahead. i was gonna say i haven't had a console since i had a which one did i have more recently a ps3 or a 360 ps3 i think yeah I haven't had a console since then. Never looked back. Well, when I was, I would have been the same way. But when fucking, when when PS4 and like Xbox got announced, as you know, my buddy Ed and like I have a bunch of friends that I met back on Gears of War back on Xbox 360. So like to stay connected and like hang, we hang, we used to hang out in like party chats the way we do in Discord, right? Yep. And uh, you know, we kind of all commiserated and we're like, well, what are we gonna do? Which console are we going for? And at the time, like. <laughs> The Sony, big migration, the great migration, the, the great migration. We, <laughs> the main console we agreed on was PS4 because let's let's just face it. Sony does have like the better exclusives. They always have and they always will. Yeah, have. I think so. Yeah. What are Xbox exclusives? Oh, uh, Halo, Halo, Gears of War, Gears of War, War on PC. Now, Gears of so War. Really yeah. Really yeah. Um. So yeah. So I got a PS4 because I knew Metal Gear Solid Five was coming out, and again that console like got really not a lot of. I mean, it got mileage, but like. 
most of the games I played on the PS4 were remasters. Like Last of Us was a remaster. I played the Bioshock Collection, which was a remaster. Real quick, Dan, before you get too much, for us, your voice is desynced. I don't know if mm-hmm. that's for you too, Dusty, but yes, hmm. doesn't. I don't know if that how it is gonna be in when we finish. I just wanted to say that, but it might just be uh, Discord because I see myself as being delayed too. So oh, so it's probably Discord. Yeah, I'll restart. Or um, the, whatever. Yeah, let me, Discord. Yeah. Let me, let me restart the stream. See if that clears it up. Is it better? Testing, 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 testing. testing. Yeah. yeah, I think so. That's good. Fucking Discord, bro. As we're <laughs> yeah. sitting here talking about hanging out in party chats, <laughs> right? It's fucking still can't figure the shit out. Nope. But um, yeah. So yeah, and then I was like, okay, well, got to get a PS5 now. Didn't plan on it. I don't really care about go- like. Like, God of War, the first one, as I probably told you guys, like, I liked it. It was good. I wasn't, like, blown away by it the way everybody else was in the world. Um, yeah. Oh, I know why you're desynced. I still have Edge open. Edge does not play <laughs> well with Discord. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, on. I just noticed it, like, lagging on my end. But uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, wasn't blown away by the first God of War. So I'm not going to, like, run out and buy a console for the second one. Like, if I ever get a chance to play it, fine, but, like... I don't know. But now, with Metal Gear, I'm like, oh, fuck. But very quickly, I found they announced, like, right off the bat. (laughs) I'm on edge tonight, and I'll tell you in a second. But, yeah, so it's coming for PC, so that's great. But they are releasing a package, too, of Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 for PS5. So, I don't know. Maybe there's still a selling point. But I will say, I'm also excited about Alan Wake, the sequel to that. That game was great. Oh, yeah. I never played Mm -hmm. those either, I don't think. But I always heard good things. That first one was really good. Why don't they just make an official PS5 emulator and sell it to people? I'd buy it. People Uh, would buy it. I think they did. And they would double dip. It's like cloud... PlayStation gaming remotely on that handheld. That's yeah, like some shit. Cloud, I don't want the cloud though. I want to be able to play the games, and I would pay a premium for it. I would. I mean, I don't also don't understand why they don't just release games cross. I mean, I know it's more work for developers to do like cross like PC and yeah. console. Mm-hmm. Like most of the games that have come to PC eventually, like um, like Metal Gear Solid Five, and most recently um, uh, Death Stranding and stuff like. They're just ports, so right. if the port isn't done well, like you're not gonna have a great time playing it on That's PC. True. But my yeah, argument, yeah. I was talking to Ed about this the other day, like people who, like the console wars are one thing, right? Like most people probably own multiple consoles, right? It's not, I don't think, I, I, I don't know, I would guess. But like for PC players, like, I don't think there's anybody that's going to run out and buy a console specifically for a game. At least not many yeah. people would. So it's like, in my mind, they're leaving money on the table by not putting games out on PC. That's the way I see it. Like, where in their business mind, it's like, oh, well, if we don't put it on PC, then players who want it won't have an option. They'll have to go buy the console. But that's like, it's got to be like 1% of people that are doing that. Especially right. when they're like $600 or $500, whatever the fuck these consoles are. Yeah, I wouldn't buy one for a hockey game. Yeah, it's like that's like <laughs> so stupid to me. But whatever, yeah. to each his own. But uh, yeah, yeah, hype for Metal Gear. Um, but this is not a video game podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is a <laughs> movie and television podcast. Mm-hmm. Are you guys watching anything new? I know yes. Marvin, you've been you've been, I've been fucking watching a all lot of over. stuff. I've been watching everything. Tell, I... tell us about it. Yeah, so Severance. First off, Severance is. Maybe the best show of 2022. That's bold. Um, mm-hmm. That's obviously, bold. Andor was 2022. I don't know any other first season first season shows that started in 2022. I couldn't tell you mm-hmm. um, besides those two. But Severance is amazing. Um, I don't know who direct. I know Ben Stiller directed a couple of episodes, I want to say. Yeah, um, usually shows like that have like several directors. Yeah, but created it, it, by it a guy so Dan good. Erickson. Yeah, the gist of the show is uh, people sign up for this job where you split your personality and your work personality and your outside of work personality. And when you go to work, you don't have any memories of you know what you do, your life at home. That sounds so you're funny. basically like a baby, you know, in this, this right. new world and. 
Yeah. And it's got a great cast. It's, I don't know people's names, but if Adam you look Scott. It up, yeah. It's do, a great do, cast. do you it's been bounce? on my watch list for a while. I just it's haven't got into so it. so good. Do yeah. you bounce in and out of that work personality versus not, or you just yes. constantly at work? Okay. That's right. So, yeah, they go back and, well, no. So when they go to work, that's their, they're, you know, they're at work. Yeah, they're, but they switch in and out as they don't just stay at work constantly, right? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's But to cool. them, it feels like they're always at work. Right. Because, it's yeah, that, so. it's like a split personality thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's really good. I don't want to say much more because there's so much to it and anything yeah. I say else will kind of spoil all the surprise, but it's I, really good. I had heard it was really good and um, it was on my watch list as well because it's Apple and Apple like <laughs> has this is the best thing things. Apple has put out. I think that's also bold because everything they've put out is good. Everything's good. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I love for all mankind, but this is way better than, yeah, it's like, it's like a different ball game. I think I'll probably watch this next. I, um, I told you guys, I, I watched, uh, American born Chinese, the new Disney plus show. Mm, I watched a few episodes of that too. I, you like it? I do like it. It is a little juvenile, though. It feels very it's like for I don't kids know. for sure. It's one hundred percent for kids, but I'm still enjoying it. I think I'll definitely finish it. It's based off of a fairly recent comic book that I've never heard of, and um, I'd imagine it's like one of those comic books like geared towards kids. Yeah, and the show was definitely geared towards kids, uh, which is noticeable. But I don't think it's like a hindrance of it. Like I'm still enjoying no. it as an adult. Um, did you start it at all, Dusty, or no? No, yeah, no. Yeah, it's got a, like, some of the acting is, like, a little bit not great. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> I, do, I watched, like, I watched all eight episodes in, like, two days. Yeah. So there was nothing about it that really had me, like, ah, fuck this kind of kind of thing. It feels more, way more like a Disney, the network, like, TV shows that used to come on Disney, it kind of feels yeah. more like that well, as far as like the acting, but of course the the fighting and stuff is yeah, I think way more higher quality or whatever. I think the fight choreography is really cool. I think the special effects are really good. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I think it's a very like personal story to whoever originally wrote it in terms of like mm -hmm. what it's like yeah. to grow up as like a Chinese kid, like a Chinese person, but like. You know, we talked about this with like, you know, uh, everything everywhere all at once, like that, like yeah. that very like uh, conservative structure and mentality. And right. the, the story plays with those themes. Like it's about that really not, it's not really about like the Chinese pantheon of gods, right? Wukong. So Wukong, my boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I liked yeah. it, even though it's like definitely for children. <laughs> um, and then I just started this season two of Sweet Tooth, which I'm like, mm. yeah. Sweet Tooth, the se the first season was good. I liked it a lot. And this season seems like it's got like a slow progression to what's going on in the plot. Mm. Okay. Um, I definitely want to watch that as well. It's a really cool story. It's like your typical like post apocalyptic like humanity was like wiped out by a pandemic type of it's oh. like the last of us except a, when More fantasy well yeah because when the so basically what happens is the movie it, this show is like it's the world has been over for like 10 years and it's like humanity's like done uh, this, yeah this this pandemic killed like i don't know 90 percent of the population or something like that but at the same time that the pandemic started newborns were hybrid human animals mm. so the two things like happened at the same time and there's like a mystery as to like what the like obviously there's a connection but it's like right. what the connection is and the show is like kind of leading it this is also based off a comic book which i never read but it uh, it's it's leading you to believe that like this is this was nature's way of like defeating the pandemic like the way to survive like is to create these like hybrid children type of thing got it uh, but yeah. it's really cool because it's about like this kid who he he's like a hybrid that's sweet tooth Gus is his name, and he's on like his little adventure to try to find his mom, and uh, you know you're meeting like all these like people who 
like kids like Ellie sort of who were just like born into this world. They don't really right. know of life before. Mm -hmm. And also the last of like the humans, which are like, they're basically like these like far right militant like people called the la uh, the last man, the last men they're called. And their like goal is to like eradicate all hybrids because they think hybrids are the cause of the pandemic. Oh, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's a cool premise. Yeah. Um, I just think this season's like kind of a little bit slow so far, but mm. I'm, I'm still okay. enjoying it. Yeah. How about you, Dusty? How's uh, you still going strong on uh, Silo? Yep, it's still really good. That's also um, Apple, right? Yes, it yeah. is. Yep. Um, the the last thing you told me still still good watching that one. I haven't finished Shadow. The last thing yet. I told you. The last thing he told. Oh, me. Oh, that's a show. The... I was like, what the fuck did I tell you? <laughs> No, the Jennifer Garner show with uh, the dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, yeah. The other uh, thing yeah. on my watch list, sorry to cut you off, is uh, the show From. Uh, my aunt, it's a prime uh, Amazon show. My aunt told me to watch it. She's like freaking out about how good it is. Yeah. Um, that's my like mother-in-law our... actually recommended that to me. Isn't it weird that every time my aunt likes something, your mother-in-law likes it also? <laughs> they got similar tastes. Geared towards the olders. <laughs> all right i don't know it look, i mean it look, i didn't watch a trailer for it but the premise sounds cool yeah unravel the mystery of a city in middle usa that imprisons everyone who enters yeah it's very of, weird it sounds cool. good though My, you can see the appeal yeah, yeah this this but this has that feel of like one of those shows like lost mm. and kind of how like yellow jackets has been feeling to me this season yeah of like we have a general idea, but it's not flushed out beyond that. And now, <laughs> and now it's kind of just like gonna just winging it. Yeah, yeah. you kind of just wing it, and it's like, eh, is it going yeah. anywhere? Or like, what's happening here? <laughs> um, what else are you watching, Dusty? Anything else? Either you guys watch Fubar yet? No, but I also heard that was pretty funny. Oh I yeah, I saw. Yeah, no, I haven't watched that yet. Spy show. I heard Schwarzenegger is pretty funny right in now. it. Um. Yep, Citadel is one of the Amazon shows. I think the Terminalist, uh, their spinoff is coming out pretty soon. Citadel is the Russo Brothers one, right? Yeah, yeah. that fucking expensive one. <laughs> yeah. Didn't uh, they have uh, shitty yeah. reviews or something? Is it actually good? I haven't Chopra watched it. Chopra Priyanka Jones? Is that some, something like that? I forget her name. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know if I could trust reviews anymore. Yeah. I watched... Uh, it's all Me right. and it's C watched slide. The Wiz last night. And I, don't, I haven't heard of that one. You haven't heard of The Wiz? The fucking... It's like The Wizard of Oz, but with Michael Jackson, oh, no. Diana Ross. I've probably it's heard like of a it. It's like a musical. Yeah, I've probably heard of it over, along but, the way. Um, but. I don't know. I looked at the reviews and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand how you can shit on this movie. It's fucking... 5.5. <laughs> It's the whiz, bro. What are you? How are you, you feeling about Ted Lasso so far, Dan? I've been loving it. I, it's getting shit on. Oh, is really? it? This season, I saw a couple of not favorable reviews for it, and I don't really understand why. It was like, oh, the like it's meandering. It's like it's like a listless season. Like it's not like it doesn't. But I'm like, I don't see that at all. Did you watch huh. his appearance on uh, Hot Ones? I was going to send it to you, but I figured you had yes. already seen it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Did. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> was. I, I think that show's still great. Uh, what tomorrow's the finale? series finale yep. oh nice mm -hmm. now based on where the, i do think some i do think from episode to episode what's going on in the plot is kind of rushed like the episode prior to the last one nate was like <clears throat> he quit his job and then was like kind of having his regretful mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh stuff happening and then the next episode he was like they were like yeah. coming to ask him like hey you want to come back on the so i if there's a spinoff i guarantee it's like him being the head coach with <laughs> the regular cast, but not to spoil anything for you, Marvin. Awesome. But I don't think you're gonna yeah. watch it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a good show. It's just like a. It's just like a. Like a. Like a. It makes you feel good, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New season of Sunny starts next month. I'm hyped for that. We got a lot of stuff coming up. I think. Did I tell you guys last week that when I watched uh, Pope's Exorcist? Yeah. Terrible. You said movie. it was good. No, no, you said it was terrible. Terrible. Movie. <laughs> Awful like movie. I did not like. Oh no, I don't. We didn't talk about it on the podcast because Dusty had watched it. Yep. But he watched it without subtitles. He told me. 
Yeah. Well, there was, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. the Italian subtitles weren't there when he was speaking Italian. So. Yo, his accent <laughs> is ridiculous. It's so bad, the, his Italian, and it reminded me of his Greek accent in Thor, which was, like, meant to be funny. And it was just, I don't know, the whole movie uh, was just, it was just bad. I didn't like it at all. But <laughs> but there was a groundbreaking revelation with Owen, who we've had as a guest here, folks. Oh, Shout what's out. this? What happened? Owen likes watching movies from time to time, so I was going to watch something the other night, and I was like, I was like, oh, I kind of, I'm in the mood to watch Paul. I haven't seen it in a long time. I was like, do you want to watch it with me? And he goes, no. Just flat out, no. That. And I was like, what do you mean, no? I was like, you don't even know what it's about. He's like, it sounds like a comedy, and I don't like comedies. I'm like, how the fuck do you not like comedy? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> it was bizarre. Like, who, you don't like to laugh? Like, I don't know, that doesn't even make sense. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. But I watched Paul. It's still mm. great. Love that fucking movie. I don't know if I've ever um, seen Paul. The Alien movie? Yeah, it's so fucking good. Yeah, I don't know if I've actually seen it. Uh, I love it so much. I like but, Evolution. That's like my go-to. Evolution is great too, yeah. Movie for... My boy Sci-fi David Duchovny. Company. Yeah. But, um... So speaking of Disney+, Plus, right, with these shows, I just, I was reading, and you covered it a little bit, Dusty. I don't know if it's in your news. Sorry <laughs> if it is, but... Um, they're like clean in house starting tomorrow today. We're recording this on the 29th of May. So starting tomorrow from what I read, like they're cutting like a lot of shit and it's not just that they're not making it anymore. They're like removing it off the platform entirely. Um, mm. and it's like a lot of their shows, uh, mighty ducks is going to be an unfortunate casualty. And I kind of liked that show just because of the nostalgia. It's not a good show, but it's just like, I, you know, nostalgia Mm -hmm. but uh yeah they're cutting a lot of shit it's crazy and apparently what's his name the guy from warner brothers what's his name david zaslov david zaslov apparently he (laughs) had like a meeting of the five families or something and was like hey the five families yeah he was like we should package all our services together and it's like oh so just cable but more expensive cable it's like, (laughs) like what are you even saying I don't know, these streaming wars are, like, kind of ridiculous. It's getting crazy. It's like, yeah, it's going to be full circle soon. subscription war. This new Everybody thing, wants guys. you to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Car companies want you to pay them so you have heated seats. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the subscription service is wild. Yep. There's a subscription for everything. Candles. Oh, fucking yeah. Toothbrushes. Ass wipes. Yep. All oh, kinds yeah. of shit. Mm-hmm. There's a subscription, you know, I got my fish tank, right? I order <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> I have what's called a refugium and it's like part of the filtration and it's essentially you you're growing what's called macro algae in like the filtration area and the objective of it is so this al- algae feeds off of light it's photosynthetic just like corals but when you have a fish tank you don't want fucking gross ass algae growing in the display yeah gross <clears throat> so one of the ways to battle it is you have this refugium and you run it on an opposite lighting schedule so when your lights are off at night on the display, the lights are on in the refugium and the macro algae is photosynthesizing and it sucks up bad nutrients, like a lot of like garbage from in the tank, essentially. So it makes mm-hmm. your tank cleaner and also reduces algae growth. Mm-hmm. And uh, the website that I order the stuff for the refugium on, they even have subscriptions like, oh, you could just get a shipment of the shit like every every month or so. Fucking and I'm just bad, like, what bro. the fuck? I almost forgot where I was going with that story. So I, I, I took just, it back home. <laughs> Amazon so loves like that shit, 50, dude. 50 some thousand US stores are closing this year or some shit. Like, good. Yeah. Box stores are going away. Good. Hey, I'm all about close con- up shop. I'm all about convenience. But with these streaming more, services, um, it's like, it's crazy. Because it's all it's, just, sorry, I keep interrupting you, go ahead. I was just going to say, let's free up some of this this real estate if they're, if they're closing up a lot of those brick and mortar stores. Yeah. It's just weird because it's like all based off of, it's like all a bunch of guys sitting in a fucking boardroom like, all right. <laughs> it, like, it almost feels like there's like no creativity in it, any, like in what's being produced. Um, mm-hmm. And... The thing that sucks with great David Zaslav quote for you when we get to the news. Okay. I love it. Well, the thing that like sucks about like the Disney stuff is like it's pretty clear at this point Disney was like, Oh, these Marvel movies are doing great. We could start a fucking streaming service and then like 
get a lot of people's money and like that was the thing they were like yeah, that's it <laughs> like because uh, like, basically everything's getting canceled except disney and marvel and like star wars stuff right so it's like clearly not working out for them mm -hmm. and that that goes to like you know we, we talked about it last week like echo is going to be a full release and the only reason for doing that is because they're like either a aren't really proud of the product which dusty touched on last week or b and probably more likely b they know that people aren't going to come back week to week to watch the shit so they don't want to have to report like their negative turnover every week <laughs> yeah so they're like if i could just binge it that's true um but like all these other things where people are making stuff with like good intentions well i think also, this will be a good metric for them if they release a show like this and see what kind of views they get by dropping it all at once. Like, if they get a lot more views mm, than they thought, yeah. they're okay. So we are kind of gone going down the right path with some of these shows. But if you know if it bombs, which I don't think like that show's gonna do well. I don't think people care about Echo like the general audience is. I don't even care about <laughs> Echo, and I don't think you do either. Yeah, we talked about Echo last week, and I don't remember yeah, what she's, Echo was about. She's Kingpin's like niece or something. That's right. Yep. And okay. she has like similar powers to uh, uh, Daredevil. Daredevil's blind and has like heightened senses. She's deaf and has heightened senses. It's like yeah. The only way a show like that really works <clears throat> is if uh, a lot of the characters that everybody does love show up week to week. I mean, let's face it. That's why and that's people... hard to do. I, I feel because like you have to pay those actors money to show up. Once people got wind of the fact that Daredevil was going to make an appearance in She Hulk, like that's probably why people kept watching that week to week. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but anyway, yeah. So I, I struggled know. to watch that show. Oh, I know you do. Do you think weekly releases yeah. actually retain more customers? Yeah, probably in the long run because otherwise people would just binge watch. I mean, that's why like Netflix think, wanted to go week to week because. Yeah. They have the People problem. Canceling. Yeah, you just like, oh, I want to watch Stranger Things. Oh, Stranger my, Things. Let yeah. me renew my subscription, binge it, and then cancel. Well, I it. think I think that's yeah. I guess so. I feel like some people. I feel like more people would just not uh, cancel. They would just let it run. If it's if you put out good content, well, Netflix is just so much shit. I mean, I guess people would cancel it when there's nothing I... that they're looking forward to. But I would venture to guess that a lot of people who keep subscriptions running purely just forget about them yeah because i know yeah. i do that like yeah i had hulu I'm running and i was like what the fuck did twice. i get hulu i don't even remember getting hulu <laughs> yeah so like i don't know but like i don't know i mean netflix is definitely if i was gonna have one like it would be netflix or maybe like apple tv because apple puts out good stuff but but right. netflix has like the benefit of like the amount of content that they have they have a lot of good, like, docu-series and, like, true crime stuff, which I like. So, like, there's a lot of value in Netflix for me. I don't really use it. I keep it active. I was going to cancel it. I keep it active because my aunt watches it, but um, and she pays for it. They're cracking like, down on the password sharing. They're sending out emails. Oh, yeah. To get one. Yep. Nah, yeah, I got an email. I didn't read it, though, because I don't really give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, good uh, for you, Dad. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, what do we got, Dusty? What do you got for us this week? Well, let's get into it. Any good news? Any big see. news? Uh, start off with a strike. Oh, Nothing yeah. new, really. Um, I guess uh, the only news that I saw really is Marvel has delayed filming of Thunderbolts, oh. which was scheduled to start filming in three weeks in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So it is the latest victim of the strike. They're going to hold off. They were actually, uh, yeah. Wonder Man was in the middle of filming when the strike happened, and they canceled that so we're going to talk about the strike very briefly yeah. in a little bit again um blade was in pre-production it's uh, affected you know fantastic four scheduled tentatively to start filming or to start i guess production or pre-production january 2024 announce the filming. cast already please filming they want to start filming in january so uh if the strike goes on longer it's going to delay that as well so then they announced the cast uh, of no, Fantastic. no. Mm, There's been rumors, rumors bouncing around. Yeah. And oh, then okay. there was one. I saw something. No, nah, yeah, there was just one this week that was like, the. this is like <clears throat> probably, this is the type of rumor where it's like oh, it so was a leak. It was a leak from, from Dusty's guy from uh, yeah. My Time to Shine. I was just yeah. going to say like this, this leak is like the one that's probably true at this point. Oh, okay. Which yeah. is, uh, again, with Margot Robbie. Allegedly uh, Adam Driver, Margot Robbie. Mescal. Yeah. yeah. 
Is that? Yeah, um, and, yeah uh, Mescal and uh, David Diggs, who I'm not really sure who yeah, that is. David Diggs, yeah. Which I'm uh, I'm down for that cast. I don't really know how I feel about uh, Reed, uh, Adam Driver as Reed, but like I can't see it. I'm sure he'll do good because he's a great actor, but we'll see. And mm. I just, I like Marco Robbie a lot. David, wasn't that the guy from, yeah, he's the guy from Hamilton. <laughs> oh, I haven't watched that. I haven't watched it either, but I just remember. All right. Um, we're going to do et cetera here first Ooh. and get it out of the way. There's not a whole lot um, since we were talking about it, and this is one of your favorite topics. Uh, Martin Scorsese is hard at work on his next film. Did you see this one, Dan? No, I didn't see the news piece. I watched the trailer, though. After the, No, after, no, I'm not talking about uh, the Flower Moon movie. Oh, I'm okay. talking about um, after the Cannes Film Festival, he was touring Italy and just decided, you know, going to go home, hang out with the Pope. Mm. And the Pope inspired him. Oh. So at the Vatican, he made an announcement. Oh, boy. I have responded to the Pope's appeal to artists in the only way I know how, by imagining and writing a screenplay for a film about Jesus. And I'm about <laughs> to start making it. Wow. Didn't he already, he already made a movie about Jesus? Yeah, I think, uh, I forget who it was. Is that? Uh, it was a little while ago. I don't talking remember about, who the actor was. Are you talking about Passion of the Christ? No. <laughs> No, was I'm, Mel, wasn't it? Yeah, that was uh, Mel Gibson. But Martin Scorsese made a movie about Jesus already in his career. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is this a big announcement? Because uh, he's making another well, this one. This is he's the real one on it right now, and it's Martin Scorsese. This is oh, the real okay. one. <laughs> this is the real one. It, well, so, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go he ahead. didn't. He Can didn't you? say anything else. I mean, the guy he goes to the Vatican, hangs out with the Pope, makes an announcement. Hey, I'm making a movie about Jesus, and I'm making it right now. And that was you it. Know, That's all we know. <laughs> Like, all right, you can't shit on Martin Scorsese because he's, like, one of the best filmmakers ever. But he, like, I don't know, sometimes he just feels like a guy trying to stay, like, desperately trying to stay relevant. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, you get to shit yeah. on Marvel movies because they're popular and, like... I mean, who's going to play Jesus? Is it going to be uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or <laughs> Al Pacino? Yeah, they'll, get, they'll get Robert <laughs> De Niro to play him. <laughs> Yeah, The Last Temptation of Christ. You guys never saw it? Well, I know Marvin hasn't seen it, but I'm yeah. sure. Have you seen it, Dusty? Yes. I have not. Okay. 1988. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. William De Willem Dafoe mm -hmm. played, uh, oh, my God. Yes, sir. Dan, That's... did you ever get around to uh, watching John Wick Chapter 4? No. I got to look up pictures that. of this. I think I decided right. I'm never going to watch oh, it. Oh, my. Nice. Uh, Joe Jake. Joe Drake. Oh, I don't know why that was hard to say. Chairman of Motion Picture Group at the uh, quarterly meeting. Yeah. Uh, announced that Li uh, quarterly Lionsgate earnings call. They, uh, they're they working on a fifth John mm. Wick movie. Yeah, I saw that. We have wow. ballerinas coming out next year as a spinoff. But the uh, he went on to say we're in development on three others, including John Wick 5 and a television series. So looks like going to blow up the John Wick assassin universe. So assassins everywhere for everybody all the time. Yeah. There's gonna there's gonna be the new like Fast and Furious fucking yeah. franchise, which yep. is hilarious because that's getting a spinoff too. I think I just saw like a female <laughs> version of it or something. They're doing like a female I cast. I saw a funny video on TikTok. Somebody edited. I told you guys the the joke about like that Ed mentioned like Tony. Uh, what's his name? Tony. Whatever the fuck. Vin Diesel's character, whoever, whatever mm. the fuck his name is, being like an Avenger. He's like so powerful. Yeah. yeah, at this point, yeah, I saw he's basically a superhero. Yeah, I saw an edit of him being Dominic the one. Toretto. Dominic Toretto. Dominic Toretto. Yeah, I don't know why I said Tony, but him <laughs> being the one that saves the Avengers in Endgame. <laughs> but like they edited him in the Captain Marvel like role, and it's just his car coming in and like <laughs> blasting through <laughs> the fucking that's ship good. and stuff. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, that's good. And it's just him like yes. a close up of him being like. Something about family that he just like zips Something off. About family. And then it's rock. Family. And then it cuts to rocket going, oh yeah, and then that's it. Speaking of rocket, interesting. I mean, we know this. James Gunn really kind of said it, but uh Guardians of the Galaxy, turns out that trilogy is like very much Rocket's story. Mm -hmm. It's like not really mm -hmm. about like the other characters. Like it is about the other characters, but it, it is centrally like his story arc. And I, th I was thinking about it because if you, I haven't gone back to watch them. I want to. I want to watch them all back to back. But Rocket, like right. one and two, are really about him, like 
you know, he's being an asshole. At one point, Yandu's like, are you a professional asshole? Like, what's the deal? And it's just him, because he feels like if he loves or gets close to somebody, he's going to lose them the way he did with his little animal buddies in the third one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just want to suck to Does that give you a pause or reflection on maybe Superman being more about crypto than Superman? No, no, not at all. No, Superman's gonna be very much about Superman. I, I, I trust James Gunn at this point. Yeah, we've. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. I, he. It's in good hands for sure. Like the title, he keeps posting pictures of like fucking you know All Star Superman and like the things he's saying and it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's gonna be good. All right. Well, yeah. we added a new section to the news. Ooh. Paramount. Oh, they finally shit. got their own section because we yeah. talk about them enough. Uh. Let's see. My time to shine. Hello, our favorite leaker. It's your boy. He's all um, over the place. This guy's fucking, yeah. he should get paid to leak stuff. Probably does. <laughs> Teased a crossover movie between G.I. Joe and Transformers. Where could he possibly get all this information from, though? Do you ever think about that? Uh, insider. I don't know. I don't know. Um, they posted a video. It was an image. Uh, it was a picture of Image Comics cover of G.I. Joe versus Transformers mm -hmm. with the words, it's happening. So just teasing the fact that there might be a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover, which I think would be amazing. I don't know, the G.I. Joe movies. I watched the first one or two, but after that, I didn't really watch it. I don't remember them at all. Same. First but, Transformers uh, yeah. was good. The first couple were good. I don't think the last one was very good. Once What's-His-Name yeah. like started being in the fucking series, it was no good. Ooh, Wahlberg? Yeah. Oh. I think like the first yeah. three were good, and then they got ridiculous. <laughs> well, yeah. fans uh, looking forward to Transformers 1 uh, are going to have to wait a couple more months. The animated movie exploring the origins of Optimus Prime and Megatron was slated for a release in theaters July next year, but has been bumped two months to September 13th, um, which is, I think, there's a couple of big movies coming. Beetlejuice 2 is coming out around then. Oh, cool, I'm hyped for Beetlejuice. Uh, there's another big movie. There, there, there's a big Marvel movie coming out around there. Too. Maybe, is it Blade? I don't remember. Um, mm. But anywho, uh, yeah, that one got bumped. I don't know. Kind of interested in that one. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, this news is interesting. <clears throat> uh, Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting lost their legal battle with Paramount Pictures last week. Uh, their 2022 lawsuit claimed they were coerced into filming nude together. Hmm. They were 15 and 16, respectively, at the time when the uh, late Franco Zeffirelli made his 1968 adaption of the Romeo and Juliet. Uh, apparently, oh, her breasts yeah. and buttocks made it into the film. Nice. Um, Judge Allison McKenzie dismissed the case, on, uh, citing First Amendment reasons, as well as statute limitations on child mm. sex abuse claims. Hmm. Um, their claim is basically, we were told there would be no nudity. We were told if anything like that were to happen, we'd be wearing skin-colored clothing. Mm. Um, but then they were coerced into filming some scenes nude and they were underage, but statue limitations wow. and whatnot judge throws it out. Um, so yeah. Um, but apparently they're, uh, said to be, uh, planning a new lawsuit based on, uh, the recent Blu-ray release of the movie to circumvent the statue of limitations. Like, Hey, they just distributed child pornography, uh, because there's a yeah. minor on here that's naked, but the judge was like, what did the judge say? Plaintiffs have not put forth any authority showing the film here can be deemed to be sufficiently su sexually suggestive as a matter of law to be held to be conclusively illegal. So what the judge said is Romeo and Juliet is not sexually suggestive enough for it to be child pornography. Hmm. Speaking of child point. sex, uh, there's a very, what? there's a, yeah, there's a pervasive, uh, QAnon theory going around. You can't just segue that. Hey, listen. Good segue. <laughs> you can't stand for this, Dusty. We gotta... Tom Hanks is apparently <laughs> part of the Epstein thing, according to QAnon. Uh, mm -hmm. He uh, did... I saw... Oh, <laughs> according to QAnon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like a QAnon thing. I, I saw... Saw... Okay. I saw... I missed that part. Well, I saw a TikTok, like an unironic TikTok about it. Like... Uh, it was on TikTok. It must be true. Well, no, then I looked well, yeah, into hey, it. Well, you know what we said about TikTok. Oh, hang on. That shit starts in fucking bathrooms and shit. Yeah, hang on. I saw a TikTok about it, and then I was like, there's no way this is, like, like 
true. And then I looked into it. And I was like, oh, it's QAnon. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but apparently they think he's like part of the whole thing and that there was this guy who's an actor I've never fucking heard of who like called Tom Hanks out publicly and then like mm. then like died a couple days later and uh, it's a bunch of nonsense. But Tom Hanks recently became, became a citizen of Greece and uh, the QAnons are all saying that he did that be- to, to uh, skirt child sex laws uh, because in Greece, um, uh, I don't know. So there's like a law in Greece that protects him. I don't know. It just made me think of that. Anyway, go on. It's ridiculous. The world we live in is crazy. We need bad men. <laughs> go on. Yeah. We need bad men. <laughs> we do. All right. <laughs> um, I guess we're on to Disney. Mm. Um, Agatha Cover to Chaos has reportedly wrapped principal photography uh they posted may 27th on social medias another show nobody gives a fuck about patty lapone confirmed the series will get, be nine episodes it's insane how they Disney get Plus. even like com- confirmed to like make these shows because you know yeah. what they're doing how do they gauge interest like who's saying like yeah let's do that let's we gotta do this well because she Kathleen was kennedy well yeah but she was pop <laughs> she was a popular character for in in wandavision True. So it's mm-hmm. like, oh, mm. there's chatter about this character on the internet. We got him. Green light a show 15, immediately. There's it was like one of the tweets. first shows they did, though. Like, relax. It was the first. Down. The first, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. Ellie, could you stop? Fucking dogs doing figure Agent eights around my feet. Peggy <laughs> Carter. That was the first show. they. That's not did, an MCU show. Enough. <laughs> it's not Disney+. Yes. Plus. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. I'm pretty sure. You it's log not. in a Disney Plus, it's on there. Yeah, now <laughs> it is, but it wasn't produced by fucking them at the time. It's not part of mm-hmm. the MCU like that. It was a network show. You know it's not connected. It's not it's, it's like the Arrowverse. Okay. <laughs> connected. Now it is, yes. But well, it's not. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I hate oh, you. <laughs> James Cameron. <laughs> Uh, recently said Avatar 3, which was filmed back to back with uh, The Way of Water, was near completion. Apparently, that's not entirely true. Both Sigourney Weaver and Zoe Saldana have said there's still more work to do. Seems like they're talking about maybe some reshoots mm. uh, are likely. The old uh, but reshoots. the amazing thing about all of this apparently, reportedly, the James Cameron cut of Avatar 3 is like nine hours long. Mm. And old Jimmy wants to wait until all the FX are done before he starts trimming it down. Yeah. And I say that with air quotes because it's also reportedly, I actually put that in quotes before I read the article further. <clears throat> further down, it said, he actually wants to release the nine hour cut on Disney <laughs> Plus. Who's going to watch that? Who's going to sit there and watch a nine hour nine movie? hours, bro. I mean, we got the Snyder cut and people loved that. That was so three I, hours. There's a. There was an audience. There is an audience. Who loved? Nobody come loved on. the Snyder Cut. There's like eight people that loved the Snyder oh, Cut. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Nobody loved it. Speaking of Disney, though, I don't know if you're going to touch on it, but apparently uh, Little Mermaid's getting like really good reviews. People are loving it. Nice. Uh, I know it. Uh, it's doing pretty well. It made like a So the black girl didn't ruin the Little Mermaid. Apparently not. Or billion. Mm. Mm. I've heard even that it's the best live action thing yet from them. Which it's not a high bar, but it's not a high bar. No, but <laughs> but that but that's good because they've all been terrible, uh, with the exception yeah. of like Aladdin and Jungle Book was pretty good. I didn't. Mm. Um, but it's got a seven point on IMDb. We might have to watch it at some point, boys. Give it the mm. the final judgment. Mm. <laughs> yep. Don't know the harsh language I'm stamp. Sick that week. She's being like praised though, because I mean, why not? She's got a fucking fantastic voice, and she yeah, she yeah. Here's a four you out of ten. You refuse to watch live action remakes from Disney, right? I know, I know. Okay. What's the four out of ten? I want to hear it. Lack of, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's like 12 paragraphs, but. Well, the, it's not lack of melanin. That can't yeah. be what, what the words you're about to say. No, lack of magic. <laughs> lack of magic. Oh, David oh. Diggs is in it. He, oh. He played Sebastian. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is he Jamaican? I don't know what he is. Hmm. Nobody's nobody's in an uproar about that. No nah, <laughs> fucking fish can't be black. <laughs> Get fucking. Imagine if they made. Imagine if they made him. Uh, I don't know. Some fucking white voice actor and said, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> there would be no backlash. No, no. Sebastian's the fish. You're thinking of the the, the lobster. Oh, guy. I'm thinking of yeah. I'm thinking of yeah. That's right. That's I can't right. remember the crab's name. Crab lobster. Wait, no. The crab is Sebastian, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. The fish is something different. It's gotta be. You're probably right. I don't remember. Yeah. He, oh, flounder. You're right. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, he did. He was. Mm, I love flounder. Not him as a character, but the fish. You like eating on a it. sandwich? Yeah. Yeah. No, me too. <laughs> so <the> good. Sandwich. <laughs> flounder fillet, fried flounder <clears throat> fillet, bro, with mm. some hot sauce. Mm-hmm. Man, I love fried fish. <laughs> What else you got for us, Dusty? All right, we're going to do a quick rundown of actors on whether or not they would. Okay. Whether or not they would what? Schwarzenegger was asked about <laughs> joining the MCU. Wait, whether or not they would. Oh, okay. Okay. Just, <laughs> just would in okay. general. Just would anything. If, okay. if the role is right, was all his response. Okay. Was, of course I would, if the role is right. Okay, sure. That's all we got from him. Okay. Hang on, real Mark quick. Mark Hamill. Real quick, <laughs> it's not going to be a whole thing, but you just mentioned James Cameron, and then you just mentioned Arnold Schwarzenegger. Apparently, James Cameron announced at some thing, conference he was at, that he is currently working on a Terminator reboot. Continue. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I think I heard that. Uh, Mark Hamill spoke on the possibility of donning the Jebediah robe again for Disney+, Plus because they announced that they're doing a show for Ray. Wait, you got to so run that back. Do- I don't know what you just said. Mark Hamill spoke on the possibility of donning the Jedi robe again. Ah, okay. For Disney Plus, because they're doing, they talked about the Ray Epps, they're a show that they're doing. And yeah. So he could be a young <laughs> Luke. Uh, his answer, I don't think so. First of all, they don't need to tell those stories, but if they do, they could get an age appropriate actor. Yep, my man. Um, mm, and then nice. he, he also talked about like how filming the last movie, he was relishing every moment, but also saying goodbye. So mm. I think he's done. He may help out, Good. which he helped out in when mm-hmm. they did the young Luke and the Mandalorian. He was he was he helped out with that. So he came in to help out, but it wasn't really. There's a, uh, a right. there's a there's a pretty pervasive <laughs> clip of him going around talking about filming the Last Jedi and uh, Rise of Skywalker, and the clip is portraying him and what he's saying in such a way where he's like shitting on the movie, <laughs> but the clip cuts off the rest of his conversation where he like. He's not shitting on it at all. He it's basically he's saying like he disagreed on like one aspect of mm. Luke in that movie. And then it goes on to him like praising Ryan Johnson for like sticking to his guns and like doing what he wanted to do. And like but everybody's showing this clip as if like look, even fucking Mark Hamill fucking hated this shit. Right. And I'll argue that that's the best of the three even though that's again not a high bar, but all right. Tried to be different. Dare to be different, Marvin. Yeah. Deborah Ann Wall on uh she was at a I think a Comic Con. She was uh she was asked about whether or not she'd be coming back as Karen Page, and if she wasn't, uh would she come back to anything else, even DC? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's no plans for me so far on either side of the MCU or DC of the comic book universe. So it sounds like she's not gonna be in Daredevil. It sounds like, but she was open to the idea. She's like, I don't know. Are we allowed to do that? Can we? She's like, I don't know if I'm one of those people who can do that. Cause somebody said, you know, when they were there, it's like can't candid interview. And he's like, James Gunn did it. She's like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not James Gunn. I can't, I don't know. I don't know what these <laughs> interviewers expect from actors. Like I just saw something too recently. They, somebody was like, oh, it was um Elizabeth Olsen. They were like, oh, what are the plans for Wanda in the future of the MCU? And she's like, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, when I get a call, I get a call. Like, I, I don't, like, if I did know, I'm not going to tell you because I'll get fucking sued or fined or whatever the <laughs> right. fuck. Yeah, she was actually on a podcast uh, talking and somebody asked about, uh, you know, the rumors or something that came up about Adam Driver and she's all, okay, so what does that mean for Krasinski? Because I don't, I don't, and they're like, well, oh, okay, they're like, apparently they had to talk her through multiverses. But she already understands, but she maybe she's playing dumb. Because, mm. you know, Marvel, they have their their leak police and so they're like, Mm-hmm. They're on you. They're watching every oh, day. Yeah. <clears throat> Real quick, I was speaking of leak police. I, there was this guy that leaked something that Apple was releasing, like a new tablet or something. Anyway, dude's in Guantanamo. The guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy that he's definitely getting sued, like ridiculously sued. And oh, yeah. but he also was getting the information from his sister and got her fired. 
from Damn, a job. Damn, what an idiot. Yeah, so he like he's he's like he's obviously like an amateur leaker. Like you're supposed to wait for like multiple sources because they give yep. out fake information to get the rats, mm-hmm. and that's what happened. And now she's like she probably fucking hates his ass. Well, she's, she's an out idiot of a job. too. Yeah. Well, she breaking is. news with leakers is hard because uh, I mean, if you have one leaker and the source, the information they've been giving you is reliable thus far. Yeah. You don't always necessarily have to corroborate it, but you could fall mm. victim to a, they lied to me for sure. Because mm. when I was doing uh, the console journalism, we had a PlayStation insider that would Ooh. give us information. You had a mall? Nice. <laughs> we had, yes, we had an actual insider. Yeah. I don't nice. know when it comes to like, so for product release like that, I understand why they don't want, but for like Marvel movies, I don't know why they're like so tight lipped about shit. Like I get it. There's like contracts and legalities and shit that they got to iron out first, but like, why can't they just be up front and be like, Hey, this is what we're doing. Like we're going to eventually make a fantastic four movie. And it, we're thinking about releasing it around this time. You'll know more in a couple months. Like why would like, I don't know why they get so like fucking hush hush about it, but whatever. I don't know. I'm not a businessman. Maybe in case it falls through. <laughs> Probably, but like, so what? Then you just be like, well, yep, didn't work out. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And the last one, my boy uh, Clark Gregg <clears throat> on whether or not we're bringing back Phil Coulson. Oh, yeah. He says, there's just always a chance. I mean, you know, it is a multiverse. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. can't Speak- say anything, won't say anything because can't Speaking leave. of Phil Coulson, did you watch the conversation between Favreau and Kevin Feige that I sent you a couple days ago? I have not seen that yet, no. I knew they had the conversation because it was talking about like 15 years of Iron Man and stuff. It was the anniversary, yeah. Yeah. And then they were basically saying how like, it, you know, Favs started like the whole thing. He's like responsible. I know they were talking about how he was like trying, RDJ was trying to get into uh, the Doctor Doom role instead of like actual Tony Stark role. Yeah, Favreau was like, the one who really pushed Feige to like be like, no, no, we could do like a whole, we can like get to the Avengers eventually. Yeah. And they were just kind of talking about how, like how crazy it is that this is where they're at now. And then they mentioned the guy who played Phil Coulson. He was the reason he even got the roles. Cause he was John Favreau's neighbor. And he's <laughs> like, Hey, you want to be in this? What the fuck? Dude? It's awesome. Yeah. He's That's why, Hey, what it's I... about who, you know, it's not about your talent. That's right. Nepotism, one of my favorite baby. Avengers. Yeah. No, he's hilarious. Not an Avenger, but hilarious. Yes, great character. Phil Coulson is an Avenger. I watched. <laughs> I watched the clip of uh, Thor, the original, the first Thor, when he gets his powers back. You know, and then he like walk, Coulson drives up, and he's and you know how Thor's like Earth name is Donald. And he he's like, it's like Donald. I don't think you've been a hundred percent honest with me. And then Thor's just <laughs> Thor calls him Son of Coal because his name's Coulson. <laughs> yeah. Son yeah, of Cole, know insane. this. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny. Um, and he just goes, Donald, I don't think you've been completely honest with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good scene. He's good. Speaking of leak police, oh. Hugh Jackman posted a selfie to Instagram on his way to London to film Deadpool 3. Apparently, mm-hmm. they're not affected by the writer's strike over there in London. Yeah. Um, Oh, he posted a picture in Mutton Chops oh. and then took it down. So yeah, yeah, they probably said He's, like, "Hey, no, no, no Instagram pics yet." He, I guess yeah, he was posting pictures. He had the full beard, but then he uh, he shaved it down to the the iconic look that he's had over the years, and so he's gonna be. And there's rumors that uh, some of the other characters from the X Men universe. Probably. We're also going to be in this. So. Ooh, hey, another thing I think I sent you that you probably didn't watch was Karen Gillan. She uh, has a YouTube channel. She posted like this montage, not montage, but. I don't think you sent it. Maybe I didn't send it to you. She sent like, she made like a, a video of like a week in the life of, of Nebula. And it's like from her right. on the oh, set. Oh, you did of, put that in the chat. Oh, you're getting ready and stuff. That'd be an interesting watch. Yeah. Right? No, I put it in the chat. Thanks, Marvin. Yep. Backing me up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you put it in the, uh, you yeah. said she sent me. So I thought you meant in our, Sorry. our it direct us. DMs. Yeah. No, right. it, it's long, but it's actually really cool. Like, goddamn, what a schedule. And I now, I like, mm-hmm. I know like yeah. why people like Batiste and stuff, like why you wouldn't want to do this anymore. You get, it grows on you. She's waking up weird. at like four in the morning to go to like the fucking the set and then like, you know, she hangs out in her trailer for like however long, like going over her lines and stuff. And then she has like seven hours of fucking makeup and then, yeah. you know, has to do her scenes and then has like another seven hours of like 
taking the makeup off and it's like god damn what a fucking grueling schedule that yeah. shit is especially for a character like her when you're I like mean, in makeup most of the time like intricate I makeup get i get that but also like it's not like well, yeah, they're you're doing make- it out of the kindness of their heart it's right. like that fucking woody harrelson oh, wiping his fucking yeah. eyes with the money it's yeah like, you're okay. making millions of dollars <laughs> who but, fucking who kid yeah yeah no, but she wasn't. No, she wasn't framing it as like, "Oh my god, this is so difficult." Me watching it, I was like, "Fuck, I wouldn't want to do this." Like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe for that I kind was of money. More but... about like people saying they want. It's like, well, I mean, listen, people if you're... saying they don't want to do it anymore, which I understand, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But it's like, well, listen, I saw. I don't Batista... want to hear about your fucking rich struggles. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I don't think. As far as I know, none of them have really, like, framed it that way. It's more from, like, an artistic perspective. Like, Batista, yeah. obviously, being one who's like, yeah, now nah, I'm done. I saw him on uh, Jimmy Fallon recently. He was just like, yeah, he's like, you know, I've been doing this character now for 10 years. He's, like, across, yeah. like, five movies or whatever the case. He's like, and right. I think we're ending it in a really good place. He's like, I'm kind of looking at it the way I ended my wrestling career. Like, I ended it the way I wanted to end <laughs> it, and I wouldn't want to go back to it. So, I mean, I get it. Especially yeah, when yeah. you're doing, like, you know, you're acting. You, you want to do other things like you have other desires sure. and these fucking movies like just take up such a f- insane amount of time so yeah, i get that's it true. that is true mm-hmm. but bet your ass marvin they'll be back for fucking uh secret invade secret wars they're coming <laughs> all oh, of yeah. them. every motherfucker who has ever been a comic book hero is going to be in that shit <laughs> <laughs> uh, um so when kevin feige did the mcu phase three reveal mm-hmm Oh, and they had the the whole timeline up there, you know, the slate of movies. Is that phase uh, three? Cap- yes. Captain America was listed as uh, Captain America Serpent Society. Mm-hmm. Mm. Until the very end of the conference in which he said, I'm just kidding, it's called Captain America Civil War. Ah. Huh. Okay. Mm. Well, apparently there's a leaked set video uh, makes that not totally a lie because <laughs> uh, it shows WWE star Seth Rollins in costume as a member of the Serpent Society. So in the new Captain America movie, New World Order, we're going to get Captain America going up against the Serpent Society. Mm. Um, so uh, it's a leak. Sorry to spoil, spoil, but there was a set video somebody filmed. And an unnamed, an unnamed actor was also in the Serpent Society costume garb. But mm. yeah. So I think that's it's interesting because I, you know, they give you little tidbits of information. Like Kevin Feige is like, he's like, oh yeah, it's Captain America Serpent Society. No, I'm just kidding. It's Captain America Civil War, and now like the new Captain America is like the Serpent Society is, it's the part of it. Like it's a that's a breadcrumb that they drop yeah. you. I'm gonna blow your fucking mind right now. During <laughs> okay. the during the 2008 Secret Invasion storyline, in which a race of alien shapeshifters known as the Scrolls were discovered to have engaged in a subversive long term invasion of Earth, that's coming out next month. The Serpent Society took a number of civilians hostage in a compound in the American Midwest, claiming they were protecting themselves from the skull the Scrolls. Nova and his Nova Corps deputies defeated them in seconds. So, yeah. Getting some We've, some yeah, connective got, tissue. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we definitely are. So I'm kind of excited about Captain Org- American New World Order now. I wasn't I wasn't sure, but I like, like Anthony I hope they embrace a lot. the comic side of it. I do too. Yeah. I, I hope they continue playing on the relationship of him and uh Bucky, but I don't know yes. what that's gonna do. They're like a good buddy cop like team up. Uh all yeah. right. Well, Midnight Suns, we've reported on the, you know, um, it looks like Venom might actually get his first R rating in a movie. He's getting a third movie. Yep, but it's going to be PG-13 like the other Venom movies. But we did, you know, the seeds have been sown or planted, whatever. Like in Spider-Man, you know, he jumps into the universe or leaves a piece of the symbiote behind. Sony and Marvel are in talks. Don't know if it's going to be Eddie Brock, but it seems like they're going to use him in Midnight Suns, which would be amazing because it's, it's going to be basically Mahershala Ali's Blade recruiting the team, which is going to be yeah uh, the Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, Elsa Bloodstone, Jack Russell, Man Thing, and it seems like Venom. But it, it, this is, if this is going to be rated R, um, this is going to be like our first R-rated Venom, and we can get some brutal horror out of this. So oh, I'm kind of excited about sick. it. It'll yeah. probably be Eddie Brock, but not what's his name. 
Oh uh, like- no, uh, uh, Tom Harding said he's done after the third movie. So, yeah. and that's a Sony movie. So Sony still has their own Venom. This is going to be Venom in the MCU. Yeah. So they're negotiating to make that work. Um, and it, it doesn't, you know, like I said, I don't know if they're going to do because there's a lot of different Venoms. Ven- the symbiote took over a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Peter Parker himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is the subject of Spider-Man Two. The game, yeah, yeah, which looks amazing. Don't the like mechanics. I do not like the texture they gave his suit, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I also didn't like the suit in the first one, like the white spider, all that. But uh, mm. the um, props that I'm letting you pick any costume and like add whatever costumes abilities you want to it. That's smart as a developer. But um, speaking of rumors and leaks and stuff, and Spider Man, I read a potential leak. I don't know how true it is, but for the future of uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, uh, we are getting, it will be Kingpin as the mayor of New York and Spider-Man teaming yep. up with Daredevil to take him mm-hmm. down. And apparently yep. his girl Liz from Homecoming, who was Michael Keaton's daughter, she's coming home to New York for college and a rekindled uh, interest in Peter. Now, remember, nobody in the world knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but she still knows who Peter Parker is. They're going to have a rekindling. And according to this information, she is going to be Black Cat. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, we knew about the uh, the whole Kingpin and Daredevil thing. We assumed, yeah. I mean, it's been rumored for a while. We talked yeah. about it on the news. Yeah, it's going to be but, great. Yeah. Are you saying it's confirmed? No, it's not confirmed. It's just like... No. So th- it's still assumed. That she's coming back, the team up, and then apparently um, right. the story arc with uh, MJ is going to be that she... Because remember she had the pendant? Oh, spoilers, Marvin. Remember she had the pendant left over? Yep. That he gave her? She knows... Like, she has memories. She's getting, like, flashing memories that mm-hmm. she has some connection to Spider-Man residuals yeah but doesn't quite know doesn't obviously know that peter parker spider-man and she's like on a quest to sort of like figure out what the fuck she had to do with him right yeah marvin you gotta get on that shit yeah i do sick of talking about it and beating around the bush (laughs) you know i actually i was kind of a little worried when i was looking at the news this week because i know it's like the last week of succession it's the last week of barry and i hate getting on like the news sites because they're like Oh, this is the blank spoiler for this show, and the ending of this show is this, and mm-hmm. so I hate I hate reading. But yeah. I, the sites I go to are pretty; they're pretty good about not spoiling shit in the headlines. So that's it's just nice. Twitter, really, that kind of fucks me up. But I was a little worried. But uh, yeah, anyhow, on to WB. We don't have but a couple here. Um, we'll start with the David Zaslov quote um, at the. Uh, this is what you were talking about: the Moffat Nathanson's technology media and telecom conference yeah yeah um he was talking about how like he has full confidence in james gunn and stuff uh but he had some candid things to say about the studio as it moved forward and this is exactly what he said we've greenlit a number of projects and i think it's a one of the assets that was really underutilized and underdeveloped in the company. And we also have this philosophy at the company of no content before it's time. This year, we don't want to put a movie out or a game out unless we think it's our best work. Even if we do that half the time or two thirds of the time, it's not going to work. Yeah. But that's the new cultural philosophy of the company. We're a storytelling company, the best creatives fight to make content the best it could be. So he's basically <clears throat> saying 50 to 66% of the time we're going to miss. Well, <laughs> I have a theory. That's what he said. <laughs> I have a theory. What? And the theory is this. As far as universes go, I think DC is doomed to fail no matter who's in charge, even James Gunn. I have no doubt that Superman's going to be good, but they just meddle too much. In the overall product. I shit on Zack Snyder a lot, and I think his vision for these characters was complete, absolute dog shit. But I won't argue the fact that some of the issues with these films was Warner Brothers meddling. And that shit stretches back, because when I was doing some research for a movie we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, 
They even meddled with this shit. So they've been doing this I shit mean, for years, decades. Okay. Well, I mean, they've made some sound decisions, which brings me to the last piece of news here, which is more information than news. The question is, real quick, before you get onto that, does James Gunn have enough clout at this point to just be like, yo, executives, shut the fuck up and let me do my job and just give me money? Well, Zaslav said he has uh, the most confidence in James <laughs> okay, Gunn. Okay, let's so, hope. And they fired a bunch of people. They got rid of the people that fucked it all up. So we'll see. But yeah, we won't know until we move forward. But yeah. Um, on to the last piece. Um, had it not been for the utter disaster that is Batman and Robin, sorry, <laughs> Marvin, Whoa. we yeah, as as might it. never have gotten <laughs> what the going on? Chris Nolan's Batman. Ooh. We may have never gotten it, Dan. Mm. I know. It could have not happened. I know. Uh, Joel Schumacher had a script done and had already had a contract in hand about making a fifth Batman film. Yeah. Titled Batman Unchained. Yep. But Batman uh, and Robin was so abysmal that WB was like, you know what? No, we're just going to reboot this. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. But uh, interesting. It was a, I guess it was going to be about Scarecrow and Harley Quinn, and the latter of which was reimagined as the Joker's daughter. So Harley Quinn is the Joker's daughter, and she's mad at Batman because he killed the Joker. Mm. And they were going to, like capture Batman and make him hallucinate so he'd see all the old enemies so even like Jack Nicholson's Joker could have showed up in this movie like it would have been a culmination of Batman that we may not get gotten a reboot for yeah. a while after because of who, it but who instead we got no one's Batman, Batman in because this one? <laughs> would have been fucking some fucking maybe Michael Keaton would have made a comeback nope he would have never and we're going to talk about it but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, finish up, finish up your news piece. But that's it. Yeah, no, it, uh, it was. I thought it was interesting that I, I was reading about uh, the script that he had written, and it was, it was kind of an interesting story. But, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, they wanted they the first one. You know, was it Batman Forever? Uh, was pretty good. But Batman and Robin was Batman Forever. Was, didn't like it, Marvin. Marvin loves Batman and Robin. By the way, that's right. Batman Forever was based on a Tim Burton script, right? Which again, mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a second. Anyhow, that's it for the it news. Up. All right. Yep. Give it up for Dusty. He gave you the news. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, thank you, Dusty. The folks. Same thing we do every week. You. Yep. Great news. Great news. <clears throat> good news. Good news. So, everybody, once a month, Dusty and I take turns picking a movie that we think Marvin should have seen that he hasn't. And we call the segment Make Marvin Watch. This month mm -hmm. is Dusty's pick. And he chose thematically as Dusty likes to do. Batman from 1989, directed by the great Tim Burton. Uh, there's probably yeah. no movie that better represents my childhood than this movie. Uh, <laughs> I was fucking obsessed when I was a kid. Like, I'm talking, this shit would be on my TV every day. I'd be dressed up in my full Batman costume, standing in front of the TV, acting out the scenes and shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I uh, fucking yeah. love this movie. But as movie we... was great. As we try to do here, talking about old nostalgic movies like this, we try to put the nostalgia aside to talk about it as objectively as we can. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so... Uh, as we said, directed by Tim Burton. There's a lot of fucking crazy stuff with this movie. Not really crazy, but just stuff that like you don't really know about because you know I didn't pay attention to shit like this from that long ago. Um, starring Michael Keaton, who will be reprising his role as the Batman uh, very soon. In fact, next month in The Flash. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> also starring the great Jack Nicholson as Joker, Kim Basinger as Vicky Vale. This has this movie has like <clears throat> a pretty star-studded cast. It is <laughs> of actors for, who were like big during that like that era of actors. Um, you got you know, Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent, Pat Hengel as mm -hmm. Commissioner Gordon, Michael oh, Gow yeah. as Alfred, Jack Palance as as Boss Grissom. A uh, lot of fucking people in this movie, um, and uh, this is this is very much a year one Batman story, much like the Batman which is, if you go back to our first episode, that's the movie we talked about. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, and yeah, he's very, he's very much like a new Batman in this movie. The, the city doesn't really know what to make of him. The police are after him. 
right. and he's kind of just doing his thing, uh, getting started on his war on crime. And, you know, you don't really, I feel like looking back on the movie, you know, I never realized that he's like a newer Batman because Michael Keaton, I don't know how old he was when they made this, but he looks like a little bit of an older man. And when you think of like a year one Batman, he's like in his twenties or, you know, mid twenties. Mm. But, right. uh, but yeah, and that's, that's pretty much the plot is just him fighting the Joker essentially. Um, but it's more so like there's, there's a bunch of other stuff too. Like Vicki Vale is a reporter. She's like a famous photographer, not famous, but she's a, a high profile photographer. She does like war photography from behind right. the, the lines of war. And she's mm -hmm. like teaming up with this uh, local reporter played by Robert Wool, Alexander Knox. And they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out who the Batman is and what his deal is. So it's very cool. But the thing that I really like about this movie uh, stands out the most to me in terms of like it being a new Batman and this being like an origin of sorts. This is before the fucking concept of comic book movies really existed. It's like before this, yep. you had Superman, which you've watched yep. recently, Marvin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the template for what is a comic book movie didn't really exist yet. So right. watching these movies now, after we have fucking 12, years of Marvel films at this point and like other things, it's interesting to see the way just a director or a writer comes in and be like, I'm just going to make a Batman movie. <laughs> yeah. And what's most interesting about this one is that they don't, they like specifically don't really tell you his, like why he's Batman, but it plays like a central piece of his portrayal of Batman. And there's a quote by Michael Keaton where he talks about, um, you know, he, he, he feels that like, uh, he, he, he really wanted to play like that duality of Batman. And I'm, I, I, we've probably talked about this many times, but like Batman is probably the most interesting character in all of comic books because of that. Like, like he's not like, he's not a well guy. He's like unwell. He's like a psych, not a psychopath, but he's not. I mean, you know, he has he's like the DC version of Tony Stark is what I compare him to. Like a no. billionaire flamsters playboy that has a lot of toys and he, is great. Well, yeah, yeah but he, he Stark doesn't have the trauma. <laughs> he has meant like he has. Well, he has trauma with his dad, but different Stark. Yeah. But, okay. but Bruce Wayne has like legitimate like mental health issues. Mm -hmm. right. Like if you look like there's like a fuck ton of like psychological like theses and pieces like on Bruce Wayne and oh, like oh really yeah <laughs> and like what makes him imagine. what makes him such an interesting character but um Michael Keaton I think is like a great actor to portray that better than anybody else that has done it because he's a comedy actor and mm. when they cast him um much like the Superman casting, which we talked about when we reviewed that, uh, a slew of Hollywood A-listers of the time were considered to play Batman. Mel Gibson, Kevin Costner, Charlie Sheen, Tom Selleck, Bill Murray, uh, Harrison yeah. Ford, Dennis Quaid. They were all Harrison names that were Ford, being floated oh around. And as I was hinting at with Warner yeah. Brothers meddling, uh, Tim Burton was pressured by Warner Brothers to cast an obvious action movie star. And they approached Pierce Brosnan. He had no interest in really playing it. Um, and uh, Tim Burton was actually originally interested in casting Willem Dafoe, who at the time was relatively unknown. Hell yeah. Wow. And Hell he was also falsely <laughs> reported to be considered for the Joker, but had actually been considered for Batman. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but, I see both. That's uh, funny. Yeah, he'd be a good Joker. Uh, <laughs> but the producer, John Peters, he suggested Michael Keaton, arguing that he had the right edgy tormented quality after having seen his dramatic performance in clean and sober and of course exactly. having directed keaton and beetlejuice tim burton was like mm. oh yeah he'd be pretty great yeah mm. uh but i said it caused controversy among comic book fans they got fifty thousand protest letters sent to the warner brothers offices <laughs> that were like, yo, we like this cannot be Batman. This is the first yeah. big. This is the first Batman oh, like yeah, big budget bat. Get the fuck insane. out of my face, fly! <laughs> this is the first big budget Batman movie. Like yeah. they were in shambles. He was a comedy actor. Um, but uh, you know, Bob Kane, who created Batman, was like, eh, I don't know 
if this is the right <laughs> choice here, boys. Um, Damn. So let's let him cook. You let him cook. Uh, but Worked out. yeah, but um, there's a quote here. Uh, obviously, there was negative response from the comic book people. I think they thought we were going to make it like the 1960s TV series and make it campy because they thought mm. of Michael Keaton from Mr. Mom and Night Shift and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Keaton studied the Dark Knight Returns comic book for inspiration for the role. But I think that background as a comedy guy really made him play the character uh, very well because as Batman, he's like very brooding and like doesn't talk very much. And, and he's like, it's like a darker Batman. And that's a lot of, okay. That's a lot of like Tim <laughs> Burton shit too. Yeah. But yeah. as Bruce... He, he plays it in, like, a comedic way. Yeah. That's uh, true. I don't get a lot of the vibes of him being very, like, uh, mentally... I don't really see any of those mental health issues portrayed in his character when I... Because he just buried him down deep. Well, yeah. never I mean, about him. Yeah, I get that. It's just, like, weird to, like... Are you talking about in Batman in general or in his portrayal of it? His portrayal. Well, I'll give you an example. So he's very hesitant to form a relationship with Vicky Vale. Mm -hmm. Is he? He kind of yeah. just smashes her like immediately well, almost. So he smashes, but like, he regrets it. I feel like a, that's true. And it's not just because like, ah, I'm fucking busy. I'm Batman. It's because like he has like very serious intimacy issues stemming back sure. to his parents being killed. Yeah. Um, similar to what we said about Rocket. Like you're afraid to get close to people because you lose yeah. them. Right. Right. Um, and and like that's explored in this movie heavily. Like she says to him, like, "Oh, why? Like, why won't you let me in?" He's like, "I did." Um, mm. And there's like all these. It's not like super explored, but you get the gist yeah. of it. At least I did. Um, I got the gist. But the comedic aspect of it, um, you see that a lot because when he's yeah. every when he's Bruce Wayne, he's like way more like lighthearted than any other Batman like movie. Yes, uh, as Bruce, especially in the scene. Mm. Like I love the scene when they're at his party. And they're like looking at his statues and he's just like kind of fucking with Knox. And he's yeah. like, he's like, this is the king of the wicker people. He's like, I, I bought it in, I bought it in Japan. He's like, he's like, that's, that's Japanese. How do you know? He's like, that's where I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then a really funny scene too. Oh, and when he's walking out, he goes to Alfred. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, bring out some more grant. bottles of champagne. And oh, uh, <laughs> give, give Knox a grant. So that, that, yeah. that was like very like, kind of like Tony Stark esque And, um, the other really funny it, scene yeah. was when she was over for dinner and they're sitting on that giant table yeah, and yeah. they're just like yelling so... back and forth at each other. Yeah. That, that's a very funny scene. Yeah. But I, I really like that portrayal because no other Batman actor has really done that since. Um, Christian Bale played it like very playboy billionaire like this, very playboy like this is very the, much playboy. like this is the ruse i'm putting up like people cannot <laughs> yeah. know that i'm a vigilante Why don't by you go, night go take a bath in the fountain yes yeah. like that uh, Come on. sir your guests uh can't be in the fountain he's like all right and he just cuts a check <laughs> yeah. and buys the hotel like <laughs> and then and you know uh robert pattinson played it as just like an emo kid weird fucking like mm -hmm. emo thing that i didn't really care for that felt more like for me, it felt more accurate of someone that's like has a lot of trauma from seeing their parents murdered in front of them. Yeah, uh, the Gen Z. You version just, I of feel that. like, I mean, I guess I feel like anybody you wouldn't just be able to, especially no, you, not, and especially not year one of you doing this vigilante thing. I feel like I don't know. Well, that's the thing; it's not something you easily get over without like years of therapy, and you never yeah. get over it. But you learn to like live with it. But this is, but the no, reason why don't. Batman is such an interesting character is because like this is his way of dealing with it is like putting on this yeah. other face, basically having this. Like, there's a lot. I think we've talked about this before, but like, Batman is his real identity in this case, not Bruce Wayne. Where other heroes, it's like Peter Parker's the real guy. Um, Tony Stark is the real guy. Like their hero personas are the personas, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but Batman is specifically like his true identity. Like when he puts on the the cape and the mask, like that's who he is. Bruce Wayne is very much like the facade. And I think mm, that I out of all the Batman actors, I think Christian Bale played that the best because when he was Bruce Wayne, he was like very much putting on a show, putting on a show for Rachel and putting on a show for like 
the board members and this and that. Like Alfred was the yeah. only one who really knew what he was going through. Um, right. But but I do like the co- the comedic edge that Michael Keaton brought to the role. And I'm just gonna say it. I still think Michael Keaton's the best Batman, live action Batman. Dusty and I agree that uh, what's his name is the best Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, Conroy, Kevin, Kevin Conroy. Conroy. But live mm-hmm. action, it's got to go to Michael Keaton. I think his Michael Batman. Keaton. Yeah, I think his Batman yeah. was the best. Um, I would have to see more of the Batmans again. I think, but I mean, you've seen the Nolan trilogy, I mean, obviously, right? Yeah, it's been a while though. Um, I don't know these fight the fights. I, it is dated, so it's like it's not like. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't it's know. very dated, to be honest. I'm glad you brought that up because I made it a point. I wanted to talk about it. I, I mean, it is and it isn't. You get some great use of gadgets and toys, and where you get does he great get those use, some great wonderful prop- toys? Yes, it's yeah. like. And even like the Joker, the flower, you know, like the Joker's toys were is even amazing. And you get in like you get homages yeah, in the, the like the Nolan right. Batman when uh, Heath Ledger's like, you know, let me show you a trick and make the pencil disappear. <laughs> yeah. Like that's a shout out to the buzzer that Nicholson used. And this guy is like, I'm gonna show yeah. up and just kill somebody to make a statement. Like, right. I don't think that this movie. I think this movie holds up very well in comparison to newer mm-hmm. movies. There's a little bit of CGI in this movie, mostly for like the backdrop of Gotham and some yeah. of like the flying scenes and stuff. But it, it it's never really like super noticeable that it's like old school technology. Like it is because, you know, it is. But like it's passable. Yeah. Right. Especially like the, when the plane crashes towards the end of the movie, like you could tell it's a miniature, but it looks good, you know. Yeah. But uh, in terms of the fighting, like they they shoot the movie like pretty smart. Like there's never like you never fully see the fight choreography and i noticed this the most at the end in the bell tower when he's fighting like the henchmen yeah and like they never really show you punches being thrown and stuff they show you like the start and end of an action Mm, like you see him like winding up for a kick and then it cuts to the guy flying through the thing right so it works really well and i think holds up because it's not you know, it doesn't have to be, there's nothing crazy going on that has to be done yeah, with CGI or any of this other stuff. Yeah. Um, I was actually pretty surprised at how much this held up because I haven't seen it in many years, but again, I've watched this like so many times in my life, mm-hmm. but right. I was, I was very surprised at, at, at how well it, it held up. Um, I actually didn't watch it much this time around. Uh, I was roaming around the house doing chores. So I was just listening to the mm. uh, conversations, but yeah. I would check in and watch some of the good scenes. But it was interesting just listening to the uh, the dialogue. It was fun. So you was thought it was you felt dated watch. to you, Marvin? It felt a little dated to me. Yeah. Was there anything that really like stood out to you where you were like, ah, fuck, I don't like this? Um, I I can't put my finger on it. Okay, um, so uh, while you think about that, I'm gonna say one thing that was cheesy for me. I think like. When he's running around, it you can kind of like easily tell like they got a wire frame around his cape, like the cape is like popped out. Like it, <laughs> there's the one. There's scene. a couple of scenes where he's running around with it. He's got to you got to have the cape popped out so it looks cool, but it also kind of looks cheesy with the effects they were using. There's time. But it's kind of like Tim Burton type stuff yeah. melded in with just the technology they had at the time. Right. So I can see how you would think some of that stuff is dated, but I I, don't, I mean I don't know. I they, thought it. Um, there's also times where you could like very clearly see that it's like not Michael Keaton in the mask. <laughs> yeah. And it's on weird scenes too. And I noticed this, uh, the scene in the alley where he's fighting um, the ninja guy who's doing flips. Oh yeah. There's like a few scenes where like the camera cuts to <laughs> Batman and he's just standing there, not really like doing anything that would require, but, it's not, even, but yeah. it's not even him. And I'm like, wait a minute. I never noticed that before. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny, but but yeah, I mean, for the most part, I feel like it it, it holds up pretty well. Um, while we're on the topic, like of- the car, the car CGI, the shield CGI, that was, it was a little bit cheesy, but kind of. Oh, there's no, terrible, C- there's no CGI that's... for the car, though. No. Well, they like the yeah, not CGI, but the the only VFX. time they use the, the the VFX for the car is when he's driving back to the Batcave with Vicky, and they it's like sped up through the woods. But oh, a lot right. of that stuff is practical. I sat in this Batmobile. You're saying well, I mean, like when shields the shields up with the, the shield. Batmobile oh, no, is the completely shield, covered shields, in a shield. No, no, the shield is... That's not CGI. No, that the, was a practical effect. No, no, no. The motion of it, yes. Once the shields are on, it's practical, but it's the motion of right. them coming on. Yes, that was VFX for sure. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> but again, not terrible. It, it didn't really no, look that bad to it, me. It, it, no, it was a little no, cheesy, no, but not terrible. Um, while we're on the topic of, of uh, actors and characters and cast, got to talk about Jack Nicholson. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. He's so, my favorite part of the, the movie. Yeah. So um, obviously at the time this movie came out, Jack Nicholson was already, he had already cemented himself into uh Stardom. Well, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Oh, a ton of shit. Not just that, but yeah, he he was already like a famous actor. But um, some interesting stuff here, right? So, uh, um, Tim Curry, David Bowie, John Lithgow, Brad Dorif, Ray Liotta, and James Woods were all considered for the role of the Joker. Lithgow, during mm, his audition, wow. attempted to talk Burton out of casting him which he would later publicly regret, stating, I didn't realize it was such a big deal. Uh, <laughs> and Burton wanted to cast John Glover. Uh, John, mm. John Glover, um, I don't know. John Glover, who is that? He's, he was in, like, a bunch of shit. Uh, he was in Gremlins 2, Robocop, like, a bunch of, like, oh, 80s movies. Oh, okay, this guy. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was Tim Burton's initial uh, want but the studio insisted on getting like an actual star. Um, Robin Williams lobbied hard for the part, and I think Robin Williams yeah. later wanted John to... Glover was Lex or Lex Luthor's dad in Smallville. Oh, was he? Um, yeah. Robin Williams also later wanted to play uh, Riddler as well. Uh, but oh. Jack Nicholson had been the studio's top choice since 1980 when they originally just, obviously because they had Damn. they had started trying to get a movie made back in the late 70s. Wow, um, and uh, Nicholson at the point, you know, Dusty just said was known for a, a bunch of movies. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Well, they, yeah, I mean, I, he won an Oscar for that one, and it was like him in an insane asylum. Yep, right? so great movie. Was, they, they're like, yeah, this guy can be crazy. Let's but fucking get him. <laughs> one right. one of the things that was known about Jack Nicholson at the time is he was known as an off the clock um, agreement actor, which meant his contracts would specify the number of hours that he was entitled to have off each day. Um, from the mm. time he left the set to the time that he reported back for filming. And also, he would grant get granted time off for going to uh, Lakers home games because he's a huge Lakers fan. <laughs> he's at every home game. Um, Nicholson also... He's a fascinating human. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Nicholson also demanded that all of his scenes be shot in a three-week block, but the schedule lapsed into 106 days. This movie went over schedule, over budget. Um, Damn. Nicholson reduced his standard $10 million fee to a $6 million fee in exchange for a cut of the film's Percentage. earnings, including yep. associated merchandise, which led to a remuneration in excess of $50 million. Um, <laughs> it uh, reports to this day um, say that he may have received as much as $90 million. I believe it. What year? Uh, what year was this movie? 1989. What a genius play. Yep. Yeah, sure. Right, I'll take so a Jordan. low pay cut. Just give me a percentage of the profits. Jordan <laughs> did it first. Then. Um, he also demanded uh, <laughs> top billing on promotional materials. Wow. Um, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he, I'm um, pretty sure, like, he did an interview one time where he talked about he lived in the nude for a year. Yeah, he's. So he a, basically stayed at his house. Well, and he's like, it was weird for the kids and stuff at first, or people <laughs> would come over and have meetings and stuff. Yeah. But I was like, you know, just, uh, yep, I'm doing this thing. Just deal with it. And he's like, I was all, it, you know, he's like, people really didn't care, but he basically <clears throat> had to live in his house for a year because he didn't go out and stuff because he was nude. He was, he lived in the nude for a year. Yeah. He's an odd That's duck crazy. for sure. Old uh, Jack. But of course, I think it was a year. We can't talk about the Joker without comparing it to the Heath Ledger Joker, because this is the one that came first. Not first mm -hmm. in general. Cesar Romero's responsible for that. But no Jack Nicholson, <laughs> he was the actor in the, uh, the the 60s television show, the really campy version. Uh, um, but he had like a mustache under his Mark white Hamill's makeup. Mark Hamill's been doing it for a while, too. Yeah, as a voice, yep. Uh, but Jack Nicholson was like the definitive Joker for many years, and probably still yes. is for some people. Uh, yes. And... <laughs> the interesting Absolutely. the interesting thing is um him and Heath Ledger both played it like very differently mm -hmm. and and this version of the Joker is heavily inspired Marvin by um a sort of like not canon Batman very famous Batman comic book uh called The Killing Joke it was written mm. by uh what's his name who made The Watchmen 
Uh, no. I want to say David something, but no, I'm terrible with names. So don't ask me. <laughs> I I don't know how I always forget names. Like Alan Moore. Okay. So yeah, Alan, yeah, it was Alan. Yeah. So the Killing Joke, Marvin, is a is a story about the Joker, which explores. It's one of the only Batman books that explores Joker's origins. Oh, and, okay. And, I was gonna ask. All yeah. That. And in this book, he was a struggling um, comedian, and you know, living in like a destitute apartment, like broke with a wife or whatever. And uh, in desperation, he takes a job for the mob, which is very similar mm. to the to what he does in this film when he gets set up um, right. robbing Axis Chemicals, mm. and he falls into a vat of acid and transforms into the Joker. Right. Um, so, so this version of the Joker is very heavily inspired by that. Um, but there's a lot of little like cues that he's not like a very normal person before becoming the Joker, right? He's like a loose cannon. He's crazy. Oh yeah. The way he interacts with the, the, the woman. Yep. He treats he's her like a big in the boss's wife. Yeah. But he treats yeah. her like, but he treats her like a fucking like, he didn't even want her to touch him. Yeah. He, he looks all like that first scene. He, he's like, he looks don't fucking touch me. <laughs> she goes, Joker, bitch. she goes, you oh. look good. He goes, I didn't ask. <laughs> yeah. Like I already know what are you talking about. And, and Jack he, Nicholson, go ahead, Dusty. He hits the psychotic mark. I was just gonna say the he, Joker. He, yeah. he he plays a very good like passive psychopath where he's like, Ooh, that guy's got something weird. And then like obviously falling into the vat of acid just completely fucking unhinges him. Like when he when he buzzes the guy and he's like he's talking to him <laughs> at, yeah. at the scene and he's dead and he's like, I'm glad you're dead. And mm -hmm. he cracks himself up. He's yeah. like, I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> so yeah. I was trying to think of like and a he way. He nails the Joker laugh too. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. He, he does. Um, but you know, a lot of like a lot of it is like physical transformations. That is, mm -hmm. is like his hair is is turned green because of the chemicals. His skin is bleached to white. Um, the, right. The glass. He got shot in the face. It was the glass that severed the nerves mm -hmm. in his face when yeah. Batman blocks the bullet. Mm. Um, which I always thought as a kid he got shot in the face, but it's not. The bullet ricochets into the fucking gauges, and then the glass hits him. Um and and severs his nerves so he's like stuck with a smile. Yeah. Or he got the pl same plastic surgery that Courtney Cox well, got. Yeah. And yeah. He had bad plastic surgery from a guy in a basement. In yeah, a leaky slums, basement. So. Bear. <laughs> uh, but. But what I but this Joker is very. I mean, it's very like um, it's very accurate. I think to the comic books in a lot of ways. But um, this is played more of like a uh. He's almost like a like a psychotic jester is kind of the way I was mm. thinking about it because he does have all the toys. He's got the little squirty fucking thing. He's got <laughs> he's got the fucking hand shock thing. He's got yeah. his fucking guns with the bang flags and the fucking long ass barreled fucking revolver and like all this and weird he, shit. He, I mean, he poisons all the cosmetic products and then does a commercial about it. Yeah, you've probably already <laughs> tried it. <laughs> Go yeah. fuck yourself. It's, that was so funny. Like they cut. They found out about people dying, and then they cut to the two news people, and they haven't used yeah. any products because mm -hmm. they're so afraid. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That shit was so funny. Blue, yeah. <laughs> so he's he's like very comic book accurate, and yeah. uh, also plays the psychopath mm -hmm. really good. Um, yeah. But comparing it to Heath Ledger's Joker, as we all know, Heath Ledger took a very different approach, which is like that of a actual legitimate deranged psychopath, right? Right. Um, less Jack Warren Heath. When he took the role, he said, don't go too deep. And it feels like he did. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a lot of the rumors. But, but I, I, out of the two, like, they're both very good. I prefer Heath Ledger's take on it because that's a Joker I was fucking scared of. Yeah. In yeah. the Dark Knight. He was... I think, well, I mean, it's, they, they're filmed so differently, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I feel like Heath Ledger's Joker wouldn't work as well in, no, Bat 1989 Batman. Because Definitely not. Yeah, I mean, you get the psychopath vibe from both of them. It's yeah. just a matter of like which one. And I get like Heath Ledger had the ability to have a modern take on it because when Jack did it, movies were made a little bit differently. Yeah, for sure. I actually think uh, Heath Ledger's wouldn't work in the 1989 version, but I do think Jack Nicholson's might work yep. in That's Chris interesting. Nolan's movies. It, That's it what I, thought. Right. I think it I, would. That's You're interesting. absolutely right. I think well, I think it would for sure. The thing that I love about Heath Ledger's Joker, and maybe it's a credit to Christopher Nolan or Heath Ledger, probably a combo, but I just love the way that they really illustrate the fact that this guy has no motive, 
right? <laughs> right. And in this one, I was thinking about it too, because he kind of doesn't either, right? You kind of just oh, get the a, idea. I mean, he has, a, yeah. He doesn't really have a he motive. He wants revenge, but. He wants like... revenge at first. He gets it. Then he's kind of just mm-hmm. jealous that Batman's getting all the press and kind <laughs> yeah. of wants to just like outshine Batman. But but yeah. after that, there's really no true motive to him. But the, the thing is, is that his plot was so um, elaborate that it kind of requires in my mind a little bit of like an explanation like well why are you going to such great lengths to do this there's got to be a reason whereas Mm. in dark knight his plot was very intricate but he really had no uh motive he didn't give a fuck about money which is illustrated the fact that he sets the fucking giant pile of money on fire he doesn't alfred's story about the jewel thief in the jungle he's just people just want to watch the world burn he's joker's just an agent of chaos right Mm -hmm. um and if he does have any motive his one true motive is just to fuck with batman (laughs) and that's also illustrated very well in the dark knight where you know he says it he's like we're destined to do this forever um you can i i don't want to kill you you complete me. <laughs> right. Um, but but in, in that movie, he he's trying to he's basically trying to prove to Batman that. And the reason I'm bringing this Yin up. Yin and Yang. Well, the duality, right? This is the reason I'm bringing it up is because. In the Dark Knight, the Joker understands very well that Batman is just like him. He's just one. And this is where the killing joke comes in, because the ultimate thing in the killing joke joker's plot in that story is to just prove to batman that everybody is one bad day away from being him right in the killing joke he's fucking with commissioner gordon and like trying to bring commissioner gordon to the breaking point and in Mm. the dark knight he's trying to bring batman to the breaking point he wants to die to batman specifically to prove that like you're not any better than me just because you have your one little rule right don't talk like them you're not them Right. He, there's a lot of that. And in this movie, in, in this Batman, there's not really a lot of that, but there there still remains that like that duality where it's like you kind of get the idea. It's like, oh, Batman is pretty much the, like they're the same people. Right. Yeah. Um, it's just that Batman is like he's the hero. But and that brings me to my next point and the next character, which not many people would consider a character. And that is Gotham City itself. Oh, and, yeah. and I think we talked about this again when we talked about the the Batman. But Gotham City is very much a main character in these stories. Um, yep. And I fucking love the portrayal of Gotham City in this movie. And it's ver- obviously it's all Tim Burton. It's like the most Tim Burton shit possible. It's like all this fucking <laughs> giant gothic it's architecture amazing. and stuff. Yeah. It very, very good. Look like. Uh, I don't yeah. even know how I would describe it. Well, they well they shot it in London. That's one of the reasons why I was excited about the Batman when it came when it was first announced is because um, the Nolan films were shot in Chicago and like you watch mm. it, it's like oh that's Chicago clearly like yeah. very or it's, uh, America at least yeah very <laughs> modern like glass buildings and all that stuff right very clean city whereas yeah. when when they announced the Batman they were like oh we're gonna shoot in like a bunch of different locations and the reason they wanted to do that is so that you don't get the sense of an, as an audience member, like where this is being shot. Yeah. Um, this was primarily shot in London and on a bunch of sound stages, but it has very Tim Burton, like, uh, aesthetic to it. Again, Gothic architecture, like, um, gargoyles and fucking, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) perpetual night. Yeah. Um, (laughs) but, uh, I stumbled on this article written in a, uh, architectural like blog thing. And uh, they made some interesting points that I wanted to talk about. So uh, there's a Batman comic book called The Destroyer, and it's from 1992. And uh, in this story, it's about this disgruntled architect who is going around bombing um, abandoned and derelict and what he calls soulless concrete buildings that obscure Mm. the neo-Gothic architecture that the city was originally built on. And it Mm -hmm. goes into the original architect and how he was doing it for like religious purposes and that the structure of the city was meant to like, it's like a uh, meant to keep out like the bad people and all this stuff. Um, But an interesting thing is posed here is that, uh, and and this is also brought up in the dark Knight, um, And I love this concept about Batman. It's like, which came first, the city, the villain or the, or the Batman. 
and it poses the theory, uh, not the, not the theory, but it, it, it poses the question as to, um, Batman's existence leads to people like the Joker. If that mm. makes any sense. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, without the city, there would be no Batman because I mean, I think there wouldn't be villains running amok or not it, even villains, like people murdering people, if not for this crazy, terrible city, Gotham City. It goes both ways. Marvin is exactly, it go, without, without the city, you wouldn't have Batman. And uh, Batman was created by the city. So, and you kind of get that in this movie, which I think is amazing because, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you yeah. know, one of my favorite scenes is when he, he's being Bruce Wayne and the Joker shows up and he fucking pulls the the fire poker and smashes him. And he's like, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I was like, it's like, okay, you're a fucking psychopath made by this city. I'm a fucking psychopath made by the city. Yeah. That's kind of where he realizes like, holy shit. This guy killed my parents, and you know he fucking kind of lets him fall into the vat of acid and all that yeah. shit. But I well, mean, I don't well, know. well, Gotham itself is like a <clears throat> representation of like urban paranoia, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys yes. have ever seen. I'm sure you have, Dusty Marvin, maybe not. But have you ever seen Home Alone two? Yeah. Do you remember that scene yeah. when he's like out at night and like it's a fucking freak show in the park? Yeah. 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 Like that's another that's like a that's Hookers a and so yeah like yeah. fucking weird <laughs> old man like, one and it's the pigeon lady it's like two, the right? yeah it's like late stage of like how bad a city could get or right. something and <laughs> that and that's what Gotham represents but it's like that urban yeah. paranoia that you're just like whereas like Superman's the complete opposite and we heard from Christopher Reeve in his interviews all the time he's like well people just want a friend like we live in cities and we're sheltered and like there's no mm. real like sense of community in the city so this takes that to like an extreme because it's like you think every time you step outside you're gonna get fucking gunned down. Right. Yeah. So Batman, yeah. as Dusty said, is very much a product of the city itself. Um, but a yes. quote from this particular it, this particular comic issue, the Destroyer, the bomber says, "Live in a box, shop in a box, die in a box. Robots. That's what they want, not people. Robots that consume straight lines, sharp angles, square boxes. No wonder the city's gone mad." And um, mm -hmm. and then Batman's quote as he's uncovering this guy's motive, he says. Uh, as he's seeing the buildings that are revealed from the ones that are being destroyed, an older city of improbable curves and angles, a city forgotten that had been overshadowed and buried, suffocated by the towers of the 20th century. And he has that realization that, oh, he's doing it for art. It's a weird way to do it, but whatever. Right. Christopher Nolan did this actually in the Dark Knight, um, sorry, the uh, Batman Begins. There was that whole like underbelly of the city in that movie that was like kind of forgotten. It's where the homeless people lived. It's where all the fucking gangs hung out, but it was like underground and buried beneath like this modern utopia mm, that Thomas right. Wayne helped, helped build. Yeah. Um, but I love the representation of Gotham in this movie. It's like fucking dirty and dingy. And, it's gritty. Yeah, it's, it's very it's dirty. It's gritty. Dingy, yeah. <laughs> the it's, Batman. A little, it's a little like comical though. Like it's a little goofy to me. I mean, it's bit. just, it's what Gotham is though. Yeah, I, I mean, get that. No, I, get I don't that. know. I, it, I think it gets some more comical in the next one when you know well, the, Oswald Cobblepot. Really? Well, <laughs> what? <laughs> in Batman Returns, I don't even know what that is. In Batman Returns, he's talking about Penguin, Oswald Cobblepot, Danny yeah. DeVito. <laughs> that one was Penguin. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> that one was set yeah. during Christmas, and that one is like mm -hmm. if this movie's Tim Burton, that movie's like Tim Burton to the millionth On steroids. degree. Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's like straight Tim Burton, so much yeah. so that the studio hated how dark it got. <laughs> Fired him and then I, hired listen, Joel Schumacher. And this is what oh. irritates me is because I think the people really want a dark Batman. And this is why, like, people argue society, like, people like Batman better because he has a dark side. He is tormented. He, he does have things that people can relate to in general, whereas, like, somebody like Superman, he is the uh, essence of light, the essence of good. It's something that most people could never attain or sustain to be like so batman is more relatable and like yeah i could i could i could get in a dark alley and beat the fuck out of some low life piece of shit where superman's like let's not you know let's let's be nice people so i think <laughs> i mean i don't know right oh, i get that yeah um yeah. 
But uh, yeah, so so just talking more, you know, Marvin mentioned like it's kind of cartoonish, but it's what it's what, and I'm not arguing with you, but it's just yeah. what it's what Gotham has always represented. It is funny. Me and Ed Absolutely, joke about it all the yeah. time. It's like fucking. It's always raining in Gotham. It's just <laughs> always nighttime, yeah. which is interesting. Gotham that, is a hellhole. Yeah, which is interesting that Christopher Nolan like portrayed which it is in irony, considering they shot it in Chicago in the Nolan movies. But in the Nolan movies, it's always <laughs> shot during the day. And you're in financial, yeah. it's not always shot right. in the day, but it's during the day a lot of the time. Um, right. It's in, at least in the dark night, you're in like the financial districts and stuff. And there's very beautiful glass buildings and it's like very clean streets and people just going about their daily lives, going to work and stuff. It's a very different um, take on Gotham. Right. Um, but, you know, again, it's that, the talking about that embodiment of urban fears, which then led to the rise of suburbs, right? That's why people live in suburbs is because they don't want to be part of all that bullshit. Um, and they're safe havens. Um, <laughs> and just Gotham has always been full of fucking rats and steam and fucking like all this crazy shit. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, Woody Allen has a good quote. Fuck Woody Allen because he's a fucking sex offender. But uh, he's a sex offender. Yeah, he is. But in his, in, uh, there's a. Um, it's true. It was funny. There's a book called Woody Allen mm, on Woody shit. Allen. And he talks about uh, his movie Shadow and Fog, which takes place over the course of a single night in like some like vague European village somewhere. But his quote is, once you get out in the night, there is a sense that civilization is gone. All the stores are closed. Everything oh, yeah. is dark and it's a different feeling. You start, Anything can happen at night. Yep. This is true. You start to realize that the city is just a superimposed man-made convention, that the real thing that you're living on is a planet. It's a wild thing in nature. All the civilization that protects you and enables you to lie to yourself about life is all man-made and superimposed. Um, this is something that I think the Batman got right too. Was like its portrayal of Gotham. It's like a very shithole to Gotham, right? Um, and in Nolan's movies, like to his credit, in the first one, it was a shithole. But it was because of Batman's intervention that, like, in the second movie, Gotham is framed as like this bright and like, you know, prosperous city at this point because Batman like fucking beat up all the fucking bad guys right right um but yeah i just love just everything in gotham in this movie and it did go on like dusty said it, it does inspire the later films uh in this in these four movies um the second one is like very 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 tim burton-esque uh, if you haven't seen it you should watch it it's a good it's a great <laughs> movie but the studio hated it they fired him they they took him on as a producer instead hired joel schumacher mm. And as I mentioned it earlier, that's actually... W w so Michael Keaton dodged the question as to why he stopped being Batman for many years. It was later on that he would come out and be like, well, um, A, I didn't really want the responsibility of playing such a big character. You have to go to fucking mm -hmm. conventions and all this bullshit and do signings. He didn't really want to deal right. with that. Um, also, he did not agree. He was originally going to do the third movie, Batman Forever, but he didn't really agree with Joel Schumacher's direction on stuff because Joel Schumacher wanted to do the more campy, um, cartoonish Batman because the studio wanted to step away from the Tim Burton vision. Clooney um, nailed it. Um, and then also, you know, he just, he liked Where working with Val? Tim Burton. So part of his, yeah. Val Kilmer was Batman Forever. Yeah. Part of his decision was like, he fucked over my boy, Tim. I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to be yep. a part mm, of this. Okay. But he's coming back now after all these years, and I'm, I don't, I'm here yeah. for it. I feel like I don't know. Like they got, I love it. The movie's gonna be terrible, but it. like they're my seat's gonna be filled and paid for because <laughs> Michael Keaton's back, baby. He's back, yeah. And you know what's cool about Michael Keaton? He's always embraced the role too. Like he knows it's like his biggest role. He knows how big of a movie it was and how how uh, how big it is in like our cultural zeitgeist. He did a um, a commencement speech at like a college, and he ended it. It's on YouTube. He ended it. He's like, and I'm going to leave. He's like, if there's one last thing that I could leave you all with for your future, it's two words. And it's like a long pause. And he goes, I'm Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just, it's like so fucking cool. Michael Keaton's just a cool guy. And you know, yep, he's he, a great fucking yeah, actor. Is. If you've never yep, seen Birdman, is. Birdman is so fucking good. I haven't seen it yet, actually. And it's basically him playing himself. It's like a guy. I and actually have not watched that movie yet. So either. good. Dan, I'm I kind of upset on myself that I haven't, but it's been on my list for a long time. I just never got around to it. Yeah, no, it's fucking great. Critical praise, I know, but. It's, yeah. It's great. And also, you haven't seen it, Marvin, but him in Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming, fucking great. Yeah. Especially that mm. one scene that I won't talk about, but he is okay. great in that movie. Mm. Um, All right. But, uh, yeah. Played a lot of. Flying creatures. In the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We talked about that. That's funny. Yep. Um, 
Go ahead, Marvin. So Batman did kill in this movie. He did. He killed a lot. The end of I the was movie. gonna I was gonna bring yeah. it up. He as killed well. a lot. He even <laughs> he even said, I'm gonna kill you. To the joke. <laughs> this is something that I uh, like if you like go into the comics, like uh, it's one of the reasons that Batman and Superman have a real big problem because Batman's not afraid to drop a criminal off a building. If you I break your legs, I break your legs. If you die, you die. Like you're a piece of shit and I'm doing something. I'm giving out justice. Whereas Superman is like, no, we need to save everybody's life. They can go to jail. Like right. that's one of the reasons they had a division in the comics is their philosophy of how to treat bad guys. Mm. Like Superman and Batman fought sometimes. Yeah, well, Superman um, obviously is like the paragon of of yeah, you know, good. So, so we're we're Batman. Batman aims to punish. Mm-hmm. Superman aims to rehabilitate, right? Yep. Um, and and again, well, yeah. Batman aims for justice, but is not afraid to punish. Superman is opposed. Well, to the, but their 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 versions of justice punishment. are very different. Like on yeah. the moral scale, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting that he does kill a lot of people in the movie. Yeah. Uh, and you know that it's an interesting choice because, I mean, at the time, I guess maybe it didn't. I don't know. It's weird. I don't actually like that about this movie because mm, I love it. Talking about the duality, that is the one thing that separates Batman from. The criminals, and it's what, and that's why he has that arbitrary rule. It's like his one rule is I don't kill people, but it, because it's what separates him from people. And there's, a, I think there's a quote. I'm I'm paraphrasing, but uh, in the comic books, Red Hood Marvin is like a vigilante type who does kill people. It's uh, mm-hmm. his former colleague, and uh, they have this little argument because so. Ed's gonna laugh when he watches this later on because him and, I, him and I always jo- him and I always joke about the character <laughs> uh, Jason Todd. So Jason Todd Marvin is one of the many Robins throughout the okay. years, uh, okay. but Jason Todd is so famous because he actually gets murdered by the Joker, like beaten to Ooh. death, tied to a chair, and it's like a big story. It's called the Death in the Family. Shit. And uh, however, he comes back, and he comes back as the Red Hood, and the Red Hood is just a psycho vigilante who goes around killing criminals. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has a real problem with Batman because Batman, essentially, he blames Batman for allowing that to happen to him for never having killed the Joker, despite having many, many chances to kill the Joker. Mm-hmm. Batman never kills yeah. him. Right. And he has this conversation where he's like, yeah, why? Because that's your fucking one rule or whatever the fuck. And, he, and he's like, because you think that's what separates you from them? And he's like, no, it's, about, it's not about what separates yeah. me from them. It's. It would be like. I uh, forget what exactly Batman says. Something like it's like it's too easy to go down that path. It's harder to do what I do yeah. than to do what they do. Yeah. Um. And I, I always. That. I, always that I mean, cool. he he clearly has a moral line between a difference between him and the criminals. It's really a difference of uh from the writer or the director or whomever is how far they want to draw that Batman line because yeah, like I said, Batman is not afraid to drop a criminal off a rooftop. Nah, of course break not. his legs, possibly kill him. Yeah. It's okay with him because that's justice. We saw it mm-hmm. with all the Batmans we've seen in the movies. We've kind of seen it in most of the comics, but yeah, um, I love it. I love that he's dark and gritty yeah. and yeah. No, I do like that. I just particularly willing don't. to do the dirty work. You could argue it away that's like, oh, it's a year one Batman. So like he hasn't yet established his his limits of what he would do. <laughs> but um, right. but yeah, so that 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 that'd be like one critique that I would probably have. And maybe yeah. we can get rid of like the prince dancing sequence in the uh, oh, no. museum. Oh, they play okay. like no, two no, different no, no. prince songs. Oh yeah. This. He wrote them specifically for the no, soundtrack. The soundtrack was oh, really? amazing for this movie. Get you didn't see out of here. You didn't see my message in the Discord. I, I said the lyrics, party man. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, those songs are great. Hey. Yeah. Um and I and I <laughs> like that there's some in, some detecting in this movie too. It's not much, but it's a little bit. He's getting to the bottom of like Jack Napier's psyche, like, oh, he's an artist mm, and the chemical uh, compounds. chemist and this stuff. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Stealing cool. the film. She's like, oh, shit. He got it. Yeah. He figures out that, like, it's not just hairspray, but it's like hairspray in combination with certain things. So there's a little detecting mm-hmm. going on. And I also got to do a shout out to my boy, my boy Alfred in this movie. He was the Alfred throughout mm-hmm. all four of these movies. Um, but, yeah. 
arguably one of the best Alfreds. I don't know. Michael Caine probably would be a little he bit. He did better. a lot of Coke. Coke was it Coke or Pepsi commercials back in there? I think it was Coke. I don't recall, but he was good, and he's he's like very like he plays the caretaker very good, and is that one line where he's like the last thing I want to do is spend my remaining days or years uh, mourning the loss of old friends or their yep. sons, and uh, you know it's just a it, you know Alfred's Alfred. He's like he loves he loves Bruce, right? But it's cool that he supports what he's doing like because he's like I'm, I'm, i know i can't stop him so i might as well fucking help him out and in marvin's favorite yep. movie batman and robin we find out that alfred was like an mi6 guy or whatever and that's right. how, yeah. how he has access to all this shit that's right um, i was gonna say series yeah. for alfred what was that the cw show that they did um uh, yeah i think pennyworth so. yeah i think so that's what they called it oh huh. there's a whole show for alfred called pennyworth where he's... um so uh, one last thing I want to talk about with this duality stuff, right? Um, yeah. Because it's like the core of his character. There's a quote here um, from this article. It says, With his psychological origins linked to the rampant criminal behavior in Gotham, Batman is inarguably a product, an expression of the city he lives in. But is he its demon or its savior? The duality of Batman's effect on Gotham has been frequently debated in comics and recently in the Nolan Batman films. Despite his noble intentions, it's entirely possible that Batman is, in fact, one of the major causes of Gotham's problems. That's what I was talking about earlier. Mm. In dressing up as a bat, he may have succeeded in instilling a primal sense of fear into the citizens of Gotham, but he's also inadvertently inspired a new breed of criminal. Through his actions, yes. through his very existence, he has directly influenced the rise of some of the city's supervillains. And Batman begins. That's true. Batman begins goes into that when he talks to Jim Gordon. Gordon says, "What about escalation?" He goes, "Escalation." I don't agree. We Actually, start carrying that at all. You don't go ahead. He no. Hit me he, with the argument. Go ahead, Marvin. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead no, Marvin. No, okay, I, okay, I was going to uh, say. I'm going to say no, yeah, what I'm going to uh, say is a criminal is going to be a criminal. <laughs> yeah, a criminal is going to be a criminal. So if if justice meets that criminal with a more fierce justice, a criminal is obviously going to escalate to a more fierce criminal. Criminals are always going to criminal. If it's easy for them, uh, they're going to make it easy for themselves. But if somebody makes it difficult, they're going to start getting more drastic. So, uh, yes, he did create them in a sense, but th they're always going to be that way. Like that's the that's just the inherent nature of a criminal. Is my argument to that argument? Well, it's yeah. not that it's not that Batman created criminals. It's that he he heightened the the severity of them. Um, because Correct. Like you he said, scared all the minor league criminals right. until the bigger league criminals would come out and say, oh, I'll, I'll dance with you. And he's like, OK, yeah. I'll fuck you up, too. And don't forget, Vision True. poses this question in Civil War to the Avengers. <laughs> he's like, perhaps our very yep. existence gives rights greater in, danger, invites yes. greater enemies. Yeah. What were sure. you going to say, Marvin? Yeah, I was going to agree. I, I don't think uh, the existence of Batman made Gotham as bad as it is because it just no. is a shit city and it just naturally got that bad because yes. I don't know. I mean, corruption. The army at? I don't yeah, know. Where's the man. army at? Cor <laughs> corporate and but, government uh, corruption. Let's be honest yeah. with the problem with the there city. There you go. Here. Yeah. Come on. But I do, I, do, I do agree that Batman <laughs> created or helped foster the creation of the more powerful villains. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's like, where you know, where would the city, like, yes, the city sucked before Batman. But where yeah. may it have gone without Batman's intervention? Who knows? That's the question yeah. for the ages. So that's why I said mm -hmm. earlier, what came first, the, the chicken or the egg sort yeah. of thing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we got all the Batman stuff out of the way, obviously. We got to talk. We can't talk about Batman and not really deep dig into the psychological elements of it. But oh, yeah. did you like the movie, Batman. Marvin? I did. I enjoyed it. It was great. Okay. Big fan. First um, time watch. Where would you... First time watch. So... <sighs> I'm I I'm gonna have a hard time rating it. We're not ready for it yet. <laughs> I think the movie's great for all the reasons I said. I think Tim Burton's vision for it is great. It like perfectly suits Batman. I think all the acting is fantastic. Oh, Shout yeah. out to Kim Bassinger. Love her. Um, mm. Like, I I just think I mean it's an all around great movie. It's not like campy like you would expect for like an '80s movie or or anything like that. Yeah, surprisingly, it wasn't. Um, and and I and 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 obviously it had a significant impact on. Uh, culture in general because it, it influenced a lot of Batman stuff that came after it. It's directly responsible for the very highly 
applauded night um batman the animated series with kevin conroy mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. the inspiration for a lot of video games and comic books and like this version of batman became like the definitive batman for probably still is to this day um so you can't yeah. take that away from it um i had very little things that i could pick from it like i didn't there was nothing really about it that stood out to me. I was like, ah, oh, this kind of sucks. This kind of sucks. This kind of like, <laughs> there really isn't anything. Um, yeah. So yeah. No. I love this. I love this movie because it wasn't an origin story per se, like yep. n- modern day superhero stories. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, we got to tell the origin. We got to tell the origin. Yep. Fans already knew. You don't. And that's why like I get hung up on sometimes of we don't need a goddamn origin story. Yeah, sure. It's cool sometimes, but. Let's just let's just get into the depths of this character. Let's find out what makes him tick. <clears throat> well, let's find out. You know, that's what I love about this is yeah, because you do get some backstory. You know, find out. You know, oh my god, I created the Joker before I created the Joker. He killed my parents. Right. And, you know, so there's a lot of like depth into the backstory. But I created you. It's you not created an origin me story. first. Right. Mm, um, well, that's true. So I touched on it a little bit earlier, and I was using this the talk about Gotham to sort of segue into it. So I'm glad you brought it up, but um, Mm -hmm. it is and isn't an origin story because of the, it's not because of the fact that they never like outwardly be like, Oh, he was already bad man. They don't show you like him making his suit. They don't show you like Mm -hmm. training. They don't show you his, his parents dying for a large portion of the movie. Bobby Pence and um, wearing sweatpants and shit. And in fact, (laughs) the, the uh, writer specifically wanted to frame his origin as like sort of a mystery. And that's one of the things that I think was really cool about this movie. Again, being before the template for superhero movies came to be, um, it's presenting you a story that you probably know, right? At 1989, Mm -hmm. Batman's still Everybody knew Batman. Right. You know, his parents were killed. You just said the other thing, but it, but it's everybody still knows Batman. Stop making origin stories. It's still showing you these things that, you know, in a smart way where it's like, um, it's show it, it's like it's pretending you don't know, but not shoving it into your face. Like it's part of the plot, really. It's like very much part of the plot. Whereas in other Batman movies, it's like the central thing. Like Batman v Superman starts out with like his parents getting shot. It's like well, why do we need that in a Batman v Superman movie? Um, right. Nolan's trilogy, I think the origin works because it's a very it's it's very central to that trilogy and his arc in that trilogy. It's like. I'm living with this guilt. I am trying to like figure out how to like uphold the an honor, like what my like how my, like important my father was to the city. Um, you know his training with Ra's al Ghul and the League of Shadows. It's like it's all very central to the story. So in that, I don't really mind it. But in in this, what I what I loved about it is you don't even see his parents dying until like later right. in the fucking movie. So it treats. You think it- you're getting an origin story, which is what I love about it. Like you're like, oh yeah, there's just some guy robbing this kid well, well, and his parents in the alley, and it wasn't. It was somebody totally random. Well, no, but you are. Oh, yeah. You are. Yeah, you are getting an origin, but in a very smart way because it's like, yeah, it's treating mm-hmm. it. It's 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 treating it as a it's mystery clever. It's, to it's, the audience. It's clever. It's like, like, oh, he went to put flowers down at the Monarch Theater. Like, why'd he do that? And it's like a part of the yeah. plot. Like, Vicky Vale's trying to figure out, oh, mm-hmm. shit, his parents died here. That's why he's being weird. He's probably scared to get close to me. Oh, he's Batman? That's why he's fucking bat. <laughs> like, so it's just, it's giving you information that you know, but it's doing it in a very smart way that, like, plays out throughout subtle. the course it's of the plot. Subtle. So I, yeah. I actually really like that. I don't... It assumes you're somewhat knowledgeable in the lore, and yeah. so it subtly gives you Easter eggs. Right. That if you're a fan, you figure out. And that's and, but even if you're not a fan, movie. it makes sense. Right. And now you'll leave yeah. the movie being like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the one big gripe I do have, though, is part of this origin thing. I don't really care for the fact that they like connected the Joker to the death of his parents. Um, obviously, in the comic books, it's just a thug, Joe Chill. Who, who kills his parents. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, back then they had to make like the connection of, oh, this is why well, they need it to makes fight. Sense. This it, is why they need to fight. Well, it makes <laughs> sense for this movie. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yep. Right. What did you just say? So in, in, the, <laughs> in the context of this movie, it doesn't bother me, but overall it right. bothers me because I much more prefer the the Chris Nolan Joker where it's just like, he just like Michael Myers. He's just fucking came in with the wind one day and was like, who the fuck? Like, Oh my God. Like, this is just crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that'd be my one gripe. Um, but yeah, overall 
Still love this movie as much as I did as a kid. Uh, I still think it's the definitive Batman. Um, it is. I'm going to say it here. Michael Keaton is still the best Batman, <laughs> hands down. I will mm. credit Christian Bale being the best Bruce Wayne, though. Mm. Um, at least younger Bruce Wayne. Um, yeah. Time to decide, Marvin. Who's the best Joker? Christian Bale? Ba- um, uh, Jack? Jack or Heath. or Heath? I say Jack. Ooh, bold. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're going Jack too, Dusty? Yes, absolutely. I got to go on my boy Keith. He just, he brought that extra little, that little I, bite. I mean, yeah, you know? he, Heath nailed it. And I am so proud of what he did. And he's gone too soon. Yeah. there's uh, some. But Jack, 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 I don't know. Jack's laugh, I think, is what, like, because the Joker is the laugh. And that's what I think Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill nailed the laugh. Jack nailed the laugh. Heath didn't really nail the laugh, but he did nail the character better than anybody else. I will grant you, he nailed the character better than anybody else, but he didn't. Um, I think he does. His laugh laugh. was not as, it was good, but I think, I still think Mark and Jack did better, did it better. The laugh is, sorry, Mark, real quick. The laugh is good from Heath. It's just not often. And that's probably more of a direct Uh, thing, maybe, but go ahead. Yeah. 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 I was, I would say like, not no, I guess maybe not knowing a lot about the Joker. Jack's Nobody does. portrayal. <laughs> well, Jack's portrayal is more of what I imagine the Joker to yeah. be. It's it's more I don't comic imagine book him accurate, as yeah. being as serious as he. It's definitely him to it's be. definitely more comic book accurate than Heath, but um, but because in, in you know in the comic books he is like a playful jester psychopath. But what what yeah. I I just like that Heath brought that level of like. Oh no, this guy's psychotic, but even scarier because he's not just a like he's not just crazy and doing stuff. Like he's very, like right, yeah. He 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 he's very well thought out. Like he knows what he's doing, so yeah. he's not really crazy, but he is a psychopath, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, yep. what 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 gives what gives Heath the edge for me is the little nuances he brought to the character, which were like. The licking of the lips when he was talking, like the, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. little ticks and twitches and, yeah. and just little things that you maybe not notice the first time, but when you go back and watch it, it's like, oh man, he's I fucking I think Jack did it. some really psychotic scenes with the Joker really well, but I think Heath, Heath pushed the envelope. And that's what I was saying. Yeah. like, Jack, Jack called Heath and said, you need to be very careful with this character. And that's basically the character killed him. Yep. So, I mean, he did, like, he warned him. Yeah. But he still went down that rabbit hole and... We got an amazing performance that will always be remembered. So yep, but it's sad that he's gone too soon. You know, gotta go again. Everything's credited to this movie. Everything, the whole comic Everything. book genre. No, really, this movie. If <laughs> yeah. this movie and Superman didn't exist, we probably wouldn't have a fucking fifteen year run of Avengers movies and fucking all this right. shit that we're having right now. Yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, so we stand on the backs of giants today. One little fun Easter egg in this movie, real quick, before we rate it, I thought was fun when they first show Knox in the uh, in the uh, newspaper office, and he's getting like heckled by his colleagues. One of them holds up a picture of a bat in a suit. A bat. It's yeah. signed by Bob Kane, which oh, I thought was cool. wow. I did not know that. Yeah, that is a that's awesome funny. Easter egg. <laughs> yep. So I noticed that earlier, but uh, but yeah, great movie. Love it. It's got a 7.5 it. on IMDb, very high. Worth a bump. Yeah, I'm a bump. I'll it give up. it an eight. Yep, same. Yep. Bumping it up I, to I an agree. eight. Definitely an eight. I agree. It's all across the board. You that know was what? a quick and painless decision. I love it. I w- I'm oh, gonna bu- Dan. I'm, I'm gonna bump it even further. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. A f- Ooh. Full point bump. Holy 8.5. Half bump. a point bump. Half a That's point. That's a big bump. Oh, from big what the IMDb bump. is. Nah, that's a little key bump. No, I would I would give it an eight point five. I do think it's a very good movie. I do think I, it holds up to modern movies. I think yeah, maybe some of the special effects were a little bit bad, but it's like for the time, I think they were great, better than a lot of yeah. other movies at the time. I think, and yeah. uh, what but what really brings carries this movie over the over the hump is uh, that Tim Burton magic. He is such a creative. Yeah, that's true. He is so creative. He is such love a creative Tim guy. Burton. I love his like macabre fucking like dark horror-esque vision that he has for his things and can't wait for beetlejuice yeah batman's the perfect thing for it yo i'm so excited for beetlejuice it's insane yeah but uh yeah that's it for me what about you guys anything else to say you want to say real quick nope no no yeah 
That's All right, good. Marvin, how do you feel now? You've got fucking Superman under your belt. You got Batman oh, yeah. under your belt. You're feeling, you're doing good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting all the classics. I can't believe what you've I never seen now? this. I know. Mm. And so there's a superhero movie? Batman in Forever, yeah. but you never saw this. Nah, 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 nah. And superhero Ooh. movies, what are you missing? Yeah. That's it, really. Just the sequels. I mean, I mean, okay, wait. Have you seen the, you've seen Wesley Snipes' Blade, right? Yes. Yes. I think you should watch Batman Returns maybe someday on your own, or we could talk about it here, but it's a very good movie. Okay. Um I think it's a great movie. It's just it's just an elevated Tim Burton. It's like Tim Burton with like free reign. Right. Uh and and I would also watch the sequel to Superman, the Richard Donner cut, because mm. it's like Superman one and two are like one story. If that makes sense. Yeah. They almost take it's like back to back, like it's one big movie, essentially. Oh, okay. That's good. So, worth a watch. But yeah, otherwise, I think you got it covered. Nice. You've still got plenty of horror movies for you to watch, though, Marvin. Oh, God. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Plenty of Westerns, too. Have damn. you seen Beetlejuice? <laughs> yeah, I've seen Beetlejuice. It's been a long time, but... Speaking of Westerns, Dusty, did you see the scathing comment we got from an Australian oh, yeah. guy who was, like, critiquing the shit out of us? For what did that? they call them? They said they're called Longhorns or something. What, I don't what did know. They call them? He was correcting the you steer? and us. and like, Cardinals. What, oh, what I have not seen the recent comment. I have to go look It wasn't it. recent. It was a while so, ago, but it just reminded me. What are Westerns coming. called in Australia? I can't remember. Anyway. It was, he was not happy. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> so that was funny. But, uh, yeah, we got plenty of horror movies for you, Marvin. You've seen Beetlejuice, though. Yes. Okay. Are there any other Tim Burton movies you have seen? Any other Tim Burton movies? Uh, yeah, seen, most seen, of the shit is animated. After I've that. seen Edward Scissorhands. Oh, is that Tim Burton? Yeah, yeah, that's big. Um, yeah, that's big for you, Marvin. <laughs> Nightmare I've Before seen, Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I don't. I haven't really seen that. I don't think. Mm. Okay, maybe next holiday season we got to toss that that's in. A good one. That is I'm looking a good at Tim one. Burton movies. Um, I love yeah. Sweeney Todd. Okay. Personally, Sweeney Todd, um, yeah. what else? Oh, Jim Carrey, uh, Charlie. Or um Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Have you seen Big Fish? Uh, the original is better. I, I haven't seen Big Fish. Yeah, yeah the or original Mars Attack. The original Chocolate Factory is better. Mars Attack is so is good. better than Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Dude, Mars Attacks is so good. I forgot about that movie. Mars Attacks is amazing. Um Big Fish is one of my favorite movies like of all time. So fucking good. Huh. Yeah. So good. But uh yeah. Big, big Tim Burton fans over right. here on the Harsh Language yeah, Podcast. Oh, yeah. All righty. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. Thanks for hanging mm -hmm. out, listening, or watching wherever you might be. Yes. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think of Batman, how it holds up today. Let us know who your favorite Batman actor is and your favorite Joker. Uh, oh, yeah. That's going to start yes, a please. war. Actually, let's put, out, up. let's put out a poll for whose favorite Batman. Marvin, who's your favorite Batman? I know you don't have as much history with it, but... Favorite Batman, um, seeing as my favorite Batman movie is Batman and Don't, Robin. You can't say it. No. George Clooney is no my favorite No way. <laughs> There's just no, no way. He went there. <laughs> All right, Dusty. Holy shit. We're more seasoned <laughs> veterans. I mean, Who's my your favorite, favorite Batman is obviously Kevin Conroy, but if you told no. me to pick live, live action, action, it no. would be Michael <laughs> Keaton. He just can't. He just, he, ugh, it's whatever. This fucking guy on Saturday was like, are you guys good for tomorrow? It's like, bro, what? It's Sunday. <laughs> That's 1 a.m. Yeah, hey, I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, who does that? <laughs> Fucking Drax, bro. But uh, anyway, yes. folks, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for mm -hmm. watching. We'll catch you yes, next week. You. Same time, same place. Uh, see you then. See you. Asta.